Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the new screensavers is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. The new Screensavers is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life. That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully so you can be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. 360 degree cameras securing your Bitcoin. And this show is a toddler. Live from the Twit Studios in Petaluma, California, this is the new Screensavers. Fourth year of the new Screensavers. Welcome, episode 156 for Saturday, May 12th, 2018. I'm Leo Laporte. And I'm Kevin Rose. Whoa! Yes. So nice of you to come up here. It is good to be back. It's actually a dual anniversary today because yesterday, May 11th, mm -hmm. was the 20th anniversary of the launch of ZDTV. Crazy. That's why I'm still wearing my pocket yeah. protector. There's a party coming up too. See, I didn't know and that. You didn't know. Nobody invited me. He's not on Facebook. Were you at the Were you at the beginning of Tech TV? You came later. Uh, later. That's right. It was pro it was 2012. So where was that? 2012. 19. I'm sorry. You mean 2002? Sorry, two, two. I missed. I added a one there. Yeah. Yes. 2002. 2002. So it started May 11th, 1998. We Kate and I uh, started uh, the Screen Savers on yes. May 11th. Uh, I also did Call for Help on May 11th, and I think that many of the other shows, right, Jerry? How many of the shows? I'm sure we had Internet Tonight with Scott Tonight. and Michaela. Uh, I don't remember what Money other shows. Machine. Money when Machine the switch? with Carmen Carbon. Gallo. Carmine Gallo. When did the switch happen? The, the a year later. Date. One a, year later? A year later, they changed okay. it. Because yeah. they would call people up and say, I'm calling from ZDTV. And they'd say, is that the Pasta Network? What exactly do you do? Right. And they thought, and we searched for a long time for what could we name it? And <laughs> Who named it? Well, I think probably the, the lawyers got involved, <laughs> and you know you had to do a search, and they yeah. were trying to find a trademark name. search. Yeah, and, all that stuff. and yeah. I think Tech TV ended up being kind of more like the default than anybody's first choice. But that's what happens, mm -hmm. right? You try to be, you know, this. You've got to get the domain. How many names? companies have you started? Do you know? Have you? Oh, ever I'd say probably six or seven, something Good like Lord. that. Good Lord. Yeah, a few. You have a problem. I do. I've slowed <laughs> down a little bit. Maybe so, it's a little bit more than that. I what think. is Kevin Rose up to these days? Uh, it's a good question. I have launched a handful of free apps now that I just give away. I love your meditation app. Oh, thank you. Oak. Oak, it, because it's a tree that as you meditate and you get it, kind of grows, the tree bigger, grows. Yeah. Yeah. We've recommended it many times. Well, thank That's you. a good one. What else? Uh, I have a fasting app called Zero. I have that it's also. Intermittent fasting. It's working those, so well. Those are the two things right now. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, because of you and a few other people, Phil Libin and others, but yeah. mostly because of you. Yeah, Phil's big. I've been it. doing intermittent fasting. Cool. Really, do like you still do that? 16 hours? Yeah. Yeah. It's easy. You only eat one meal a day during, during daylight hours. Right, exactly. Basically. Well, Sometimes two. You can do like a late lunch and then dinner as yeah. well. That's one way. There are many ways. To There's do, many but, ways. Yeah. But zero supports all of those. Yeah. And those are free. You just do that because you. Yeah. I mean, I think that everybody has like a way to give back, and I hire a developer and write code is How my fun. way to kind of give free software. How away. fun! Well, yeah. you have a, obviously you have a knack for that. Uh, and then you're still on the board at Hodinky, which was the watch company that, that's you, right. that you bought or merged with Mill. Merged or, with, yeah. yeah. So that's been growing like crazy. Yeah. It's about 25 people or so in New York. Hodinky just did the cover story, uh, amazing interview with Johnny Ive yeah, about that was, the Apple Watch. We learned stuff about the Apple Watch, the design process. We had no idea. That's kind of crazy. It was a great interview. That was, yeah. that was fun. Ho I didn't get a chance to go there, but... Ben did, the founder, and yeah. uh, that was... That Is was that Ben's fun. article? Is that who wrote yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, okay. H-O-D-I-N-K-E-E, hodinky.com, if you want to read that. Nice picture of Johnny and a great yeah. story. So, and and I I don't know, is this public knowledge? But you, the baby? The, the baby? Yeah, yeah, Zelda Rose. They, they've been renting a baby, and ben. it's working out. <laughs> <laughs> Zelda... Six, six months old on the 8th. Oh, Zelda yeah. Rose. <gasps> kind of crazy. And you and Daria are just loving it. 
Are yeah, you? I mean, I got to tell you, the first uh, first couple of months are tough. You know, there's a yeah. it's it's a lot to we don't change, warn you get really used to. There's no manual, yeah. you know, but um, it's it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, you know this. And it's, she's it's beautiful. Awesome. I have to say, Zelda well, is you. a really beautiful. Little yeah, lady. she's awesome. Yeah. She lights she's up when sweet. you walk into the room yeah, and tell. all smiles, and yeah, it's just nice. it's amazing. Well, so. love love to Daria and to oh. Zelda who could not be here today. Yeah. Nap time. You Nap know time. Is. We used to call Kevin on the screensavers, the old screensaver. We used to call him the dark tipper. And I realize now we're going to have to start calling you the silver tipper. I know. Because you've it's got. It's coming in. <laughs> Look at that. You're that our silver our little in Kevin there. is all grown up. Look yeah, at that. That's a little tight. Nice. Like, oh, <laughs> this was a good shot. And then he came and they like, zoomed straight right in. in on that. With the bags under the eyes. Zoomed right and... in on that. Oh, you got to get over that. <laughs> Believe me. That's. <laughs> That's Remember just, when HD cameras came out and oh everyone was freaking Lord, out? Oh All the news anchors were like you yeah. know, getting Rightly Botox so. right away. Rightly and, so. Yeah. I did a, a, a live with Regis and Kelly shortly after that. And they were, tr uh, uh, Kelly had already been doing, whatever her TV show was, was in HD. But they were going to start doing uh, live in HD. And they brought in the new makeup artist. And she used, she used an airbrush to paint. And it's like there's a compressor going, and, and she bring it because you can't use powder because you can see it right you can see the details of the powder that's crazy so they painted our faces i think they abandoned we didn't that. have that tech and uh, tech tv <laughs> no we would we not had have... to do our own makeup do you remember they had to fire the makeup people and then we had to come we and ran out of money and do our own stuff it was i only knew Tough we were times. really in trouble when they stopped having oatmeal in the snack room in the break room <laughs> that's when i knew that tech tv was that's when i started looking for work Actually, our old uh, our old uh, owner, I guess he owns Paul C Allen. Paul Allen owned us, right? Yeah. The old owner of Ziff Davis, Sunson, is SoftBank. I didn't know that. Yes, and he has done very well for Crazy. himself. He's now trying to sell Sprint to T-Mobile. Uh, SoftBank is in a lot of things. One of the things they're into is they bought General Dynamics. You ever hear of that company? Oh, of course. All the robots. <laughs> Google the bought scary them. ones. They, the Google bought them and not realizing that they had a bunch of defense contracts for making killer robots. Uh. And Google, I think, rightly so realized maybe given that we're Google, we shouldn't be in the killer robot business. Yeah. So they sold it to SunSun, and they were at um, some big event, I think, um, oh gosh, now I think it was a TechCrunch Disrupt event, mm. and they made a, a surprising announcement. What is oh, that? That's an incoming call from someone. Somebody's calling me. <laughs> is that on my Skype? Oh my God, who's that? Martin Sargent! Smile, Marty. man! <laughs> I thought you were frozen for a minute. Wait, wait, we got to put on hats so poor Marty doesn't feel left out. I'll get you a hat. Marty, how are you? What's up, Marty? Um, what are you guys doing? <laughs> well, uh, uh, well, we're doing the new screensavers. Did, did I ever tell you we have the new screensavers? Uh, yeah, I've, I've hosted it with you before, Leo. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Thank God, and I'm glad you got the number three uh, button for a three-year-old, and you put up streamers. And He's everything. got a picture of himself they, in the background. They were having a sale on the number the threes down at the party <laughs> stores because <laughs> I, I guess they moved into four season, and these are. Wait, wait, we called Kevin the Dark Tipper, but Martin had his own name <laughs> on the show. Do you remember that, Marty? I can't, yeah. Of course I remember. I did a twisted list every day. The twisted, the twisted lister. lister. That's right. Uh, Paul those, Block. Those are some of the with... best. Paul Block named him and you. I hated the twisted it, lister. He hated <laughs> the dark tipper. I hated Paul Block. So we all are in it together. <laughs> the no, twisted I love Paul. lister. The twisted lister. But those were funny. Remember? Those were very funny. I loved your they twisted lister. They were supposed lister. to be. I don't know if they really were or not. <laughs> well, they were good. What are you? What have you been up to, Mr. Sergeant? Um, I work in advertising. Oh, you poor son of a bitch. I'm a writer, creative director at an advertising agency. That's Here's the thing, though. You work for tech TV, and every job after that is terrible. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> it's so funny because yeah. you, I mean, you guys so were all so young, and I knew that you were, ne you were now in the best job you will ever have for the rest it of your life. It was awesome Because I'd worked in, I was like in my mid-40s, I'd worked in broadcasting. I knew how unusual... We got to do what we wanted. Yeah, it was a party, nonstop. Until they brought in Paul Block. But before yeah. that... No, but, you know, Paul Block comes on, 
and they let me come up in, with my own TV show. And you make did it. that, and yes. It was did. ridiculous. That's the show I appeared on in my underwear, as I remember. Yeah, you did, uninvited. <laughs> oh, then you just walked out, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> ratings, <laughs> anything for ratings. <laughs> anything for ratings. That didn't help the ratings. <laughs> here, here you go. Here's Martin Sargent. This is Unscrewed. Giving us the star Episode 64. Oh, that was a bad of relationships with the star nation. I'm Martin Sargent, clearly I'm the guy. Duh. Yeah, I'm pretty much the man. Get with it. Yo, what's up? That's red, man. That's what's true, up? you gotta give Paul credit. Cause he figured out a way to take the screensaver set and repurpose it. Yeah, nighttime. He'd bring a couch out. Yeah. And turn that it into, there set. you go. That's the screensaver set. And get a whole other show out of that. After thing. hours. Unscrewed. Do you miss Do you miss doing that show, Marty? I, I miss it every day. Yeah, it, it was the most fun I've ever had in my life. I mean, it was so ridiculous. I can't believe they let us do any of that stuff. Yeah, they didn't it really. It should have been on and, TV. And the, the, I mean, we would travel. Jay Speed and I. He was my main writer. Yep. Stuart Engesser, the funniest guys I've ever worked with. Yeah. We would travel around the country, going to. UFO cult compounds <laughs> and hanging out with like crazy internet celebrities like the Peter Pan guy and just film. And it was so much fun. And we would get really drunk when we did it. It was great. <laughs> Basically, just got paid to drink the J entire time. There you are with That's Kevin. Right. There's me. No grays there. No. His programs from his desktop. Mm -hmm. Is this a segment so called I Hate You? Launch anything like anybody else yeah, sure. what, what, what we're going to do is we're going to hit uh, print screen and that's going <laughs> to capture a snapshot of the desktop. Oh, devious. And then we're going to open up paint <laughs> and we're going to paste it right inside paint, okay? Okay, this paint comes with like paint any Windows. Any Windows, right? 95, right. 98, you name it. So let's close out paint. We've already pasted it and saved it here. What the hell version of Windows is this? Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is we'll launch Internet oh, Explorer. Oh, look how Google used to look. And then we'll move this out of the way here, and I'll drag this desktop.bitmap right into Internet Explorer. You haven't started Dig at this point. Now, hold on. It's getting no, bad. not yet. It's starting about 2004. 2004, that's right. If you missed any of that, wow, that is the nerdiest thing that's ever been on this show. Dark Hopefully I'll have some more. If you missed any of that, yeah, come back again. Kevin's got an article up on our website. Now, don't give too much hair. The hair is horrible. I'll never forget. Oh, that's Kevin? <laughs> that was Pat. Um, like Patrick Norton. No, that Patrick was Kevin. Gone. Dude, I'll never I, forget. Go, I have hair. Come, standing in the makeup Patrick. room, and you and Dan Huard yes. coming in there, and you had a bottle of bedhead from That's Bumble right. and Company, right. and you took your hair and you just and frizzled it out. That's you how you did little, that. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember, then. but one episode, I said, "Give me that," and I did it, and it didn't work on me. Did not Did, have the same. Please tell me we have that footage somewhere. Somewhere that, <laughs> that footage would be amazing. Li lives on. Marty, we should mention, and I don't want to bring everybody down, but Jay passed away just a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. He did yeah. Um, last year. It was a terrible, terrible loss. Yeah. One named my best friend, a main writer on the show, co collaborator in almost everything I did. Kid was a genius. That's how you this know you've been doing something a long time. Here's to Jay, whatever yeah. is in that. Uh, thermal uh vest what do you think is in there hey, <laughs> because know. you didn't invite me i still have to come up there, I'll be up there by the end of the show you you get in the car you'll be here before it's over because it's gonna be a long show i think yeah well i i gotta give you your third anniversary gift well what's that well you know traditionally third anniversary gift is uh leather <laughs> so oh dear i don't know if it's oh, gonna dear. fit but i went down to the docks <laughs> And <laughs> oh my God. And I got a pretty fair price on it, I think. Does it come with the person inside? Quit ripping my earplugs out. I can't hear anything. <laughs> God. Oh my God. <laughs> Happy anniversary to me. Woohoo. Uh, <laughs> it's, what you've, it's what you've always asked for. Hey, you know what? I don't pimp my gimp out to just anybody. No, <laughs> I need a gimp. Just wait. Uh, let me ask my wife. But I think I think it's okay. It's okay. Um, anyway, it's really nice to see you, Marty. <laughs> Are you going? I understand that on Thursday at, a, at a, a bar, Marty introduced us the best dive bars, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. What was the one over uh, in the Mission? He always used to go to. Remember that? Yep. Um, Uptown. Uptown. Yes. You knew that it you was Marty's bar. You could always there. They go, hey, Marty, when he walked in. That's right. Go, oh, boy, they know him here. The usual Marty? 
And it was, I think, six or seven tequila shots, as I remember. Is the no, uptown is, gone? I drank bourbon. Bourbon. Or I, oh, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I drank the tequila shots. Now I remember. <laughs> I got in a lot of trouble with those tequila shots. Marty, it's so nice to see you. Please come to the, uh, the, uh, the party on Thursday. Reunion. I guess there's, there's Are a you reunion. going to that? What re what? I wasn't I, invited either. Nobody knows Marty. about don't, this. It's don't a Tech feel TV bad. reunion party thing. <laughs> Thursday. All the cool kids. I just heard about it. Got invited. Where? Where? I don't know. Downtown somewhere in SF. <laughs> if we should have How our own it? party and Who's screw going to this. Bring the gimp. He can be your plus one. <laughs> it's gonna be uh, you and Carmine Gallo. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. It's gonna be fun. Carmine, speaking of hair, he was he had beautiful black hair, right? Curly. He had a nice, oh, he had like a fro. I, mean, I didn't inspect it. He used it. to go in and dye his uh, sideburns white so that he would have more gravitas. I kid you not. Wow. Now we don't have to do that anymore. I bet Carmine doesn't either. I don't he, remember. You, you sure you're not thinking of Alex Trebek? <laughs> Uh, it's great to see you, Marty. Thank you so much for calling in our third anniversary and the 20th anniversary of Tech TV. Um, uh, great to see you guys. Come you know, up and I do the show. Been there, but you yeah. didn't invite me. Come up and do the show sometime soon. Yeah, Bring sure. the gimp. Okay. Or not. Don't, or do not. not. Do not. Do not. Maybe I don't we'll even, see you Thursday. <laughs> I don't even know. We'll send you secret invitation details. Okay, Marty? Deal. Okay. I didn't. We, we didn't want to say it on the air because we were afraid to... You know, a massive crowd would show up. Actually, we were afraid a massive crowd wouldn't show up. It'd be like 10 people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> see you, Marty. See Happy Marty. anniversary. Great to see you. Oh, that's so, gosh, that's nice. What a surprise. That's awesome. I didn't. I haven't I seen didn't. Marty in so long. Can we, we can take these off? Yeah. yeah, Marty's great. I'm sad about him working in advertising, though. It's, actually, it could be worse. You could be working in venture capital. Yeah. Peace uh, is fun. <laughs> It could be worse than time. that. It could be a podcaster. Think about that. That's true. Oh, God. A couple of... Actually, should we do the top stories? Sure. Do we have time? Well, have we burned up all our time? I just want... There are a couple of things I wanted to mention. Let's play this. This is... The, do you have the duplex call there, yeah. Anthony? So Google I.O. and uh, uh, Microsoft Builder this week. Yes. Uh, we'll talk in a little bit because I think you have some thoughts about Android P. Yeah. You've been using that on your Pixel. Yes. Uh, it. But they did something that was actually very controversial. And a lot of people said this is a bad idea. This is Google Duplex. Here's uh, Sundar Pichai. Between 10 and noon. He's asking what his happens assistant. is the Google Assistant makes the call seamlessly in the background for you. So what you're going to hear is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you. Let's listen. Hello, how can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. That's the assistant! I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Wow. Sure, give me one. That's a real human! Mm-hmm. She has no idea. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like. What service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, wow. we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Now, have a great day. Bye. First of all, I think that's wow. They they won the Turing test. Yeah. Don't you think? Uh, Cuz the assistant had no idea it was talking to a computer. That is creepy. It actually I'm going to play another one for you that's even weirder. Let me I'll I find that. I missed this part of the demo. I didn't I tuned in a little bit later. So this is my first time seeing it. That is insane. Just just wild. Uh, they got a little heat because people well, they said, you're tricking people. Yeah. And Google said, well, and I thought this was a good idea. They said, well, we're going to disclose. If we use this, and they say you will be able to use this by the end of the year. When you use it, it will say, this is Google Assistant calling for Kevin. Hmm. I don't know. If, I mean, we'll see what they, kind of disclosure they give. Um, and what they did, they said, we have thousands of calls like this. But they didn't say what happens if the assistant gets thrown a complete curve. Let me see. I got to hmm. find the, um, the actual site. Because the Google site has some more of these. 
Yeah, scroll down in the blog post. Play that second one, Duplex Calling a Restaurant. This is really hard. Excellent. See if you could do this. I couldn't do it. See how may I help you? Hi, um, I'd like to reserve a table for Wednesday the 7th. That's seven. the robot. For seven people? It's, um, wait a minute, pause it for a second. It's for four people. So the human thought, it he said Wednesday the 7th, and the human thought, oh, for seven people, threw it a curveball, right. and it said no, for four people. Hit, keep going. For people, when... Um, next night? Wednesday at 6 p.m. Oh, actually, we leave her for, like, opera, like, uh, five people. Okay, four stop people. it. Let me, def let me tell you what that person just said, because the human is hard to understand. I don't understand what the human said. <laughs> the the restaurant... Pretty thick accent. Uh, yeah. Did not phase the assistant. So I'll, do, I'll help you here. The, uh, the restaurant said, we don't take reservations for parties less than five people. Mm. You don't need a reservation. Go on. Before you can come. How long is the wait usually to uh, be seated? Pause it. For when tomorrow or... That is a huge leap it just made. Mm -hmm. Because not only did she throw out a curve saying you don't need a reservation because your party is less than five people, it then said, well, now I'll need to know how long the wait is. Right. How right. early I should go. I don't know if I would ask that question. Keep going. A week A or? For next Wednesday, uh, the 7th. Oh, no, it's not too busy. You, you, you can come for four people, okay? Oh, I got gotcha. you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yep. It doesn't say goodbye. What doesn't it ever say goodbye? I've it said thanks. Last call. It said thanks. Oh, did it? Okay. <laughs> so here's the weird thing. When you use Google Assistant today, there's always like a two to three second delay from when you say something yeah. to it actually recognizing it. This seems like it's real time. Well, and, the, and Google in the blog post talks about something they call disfluencies. You heard it say, um, and... And that's mm. what it needs to calculate. Exactly. Yeah. Instead of saying working, it actually, it does what a human does when a human's thinking, um, right. or mmm. So it's using those disfluencies. But it still feels like a native, like real conversation then, because there's not an awkward pause at yeah. that point. I think if you were looking for evidence that it was a computer, you might have picked up on it, right? Because it's, it's every once in a while, just very subtle. The inflection's a little odd, right? But those people weren't looking for a computer. Mm -hmm. And they didn't think they were talking to a computer. I, think, I don't think you can say I'm Google calling on behalf of someone because then people will just screw with it. They're gonna hang up. That's gonna be well, you can, they'll hang up. They'll give it bad data. You know, like you'll just say all kinds of random things. Play a couple more because these are these are kind of amazing. I, I, I really feel like this is kind of a breakthrough in artificial intelligence, and I'm a big. So um, Tuesday through Thursday we're open eleven to two, and then reopen four to nine. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we are Friday, Saturday, we're open 11 to 9. And then Sunday, we're open. It under, no, that's fine. What, the, what they put that in there to show that sometimes they get extremely complex responses. Humans are mm -hmm. made for that. What they've been using this for primarily is to call businesses and say, what are your hours? They're mm -hmm. trying to get the hours accurate oh, in Google Business. Right? Okay. So that was the kind of answer they get, and they're able to handle it. Uh, it's... it's um, Let's see, um, go, go, let's see, um, yeah, do, the, do this a duplex calling a restaurant. This is a male voice. That's the other thing. These voices are really good. Yeah, they're really good. Good evening. Hello? Hello. Hi, um, I'd like to reserve a table for Friday the 3rd. It even is nasal. Yeah. Hold on one more. Doesn't have a nose. It's just. <laughs> How's mm -hmm. it nasal? Okay. Okay. Hold on one second. Okay. Uh -huh. So Friday, November third. How many people? For two people. Two Four. people. By the way, that's interesting. Yeah. For, as if it's thinking, it's not. Right. It could just as easily said for two people. Right. But they put the four. Or just two people. Or two, two people. <laughs> it makes it feel more like a human. Yeah. That's how you would say. It. Yeah. What time? At five p.m. At Okay. And your name? The first name is Daniel. That's D-A-N-I-E-L. Okay. You're all set. Okay, great. Thanks. We'll see you next Friday. Okay, thank you. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye. It said oh, bye, so it said just bye. for you. I was waiting for that. <laughs> Goodbye. It, just for you. Uh, the couple of things Google's doing, they've, they've, they're adding what they call prosody, 
P-R-O-S-O-D-Y. So, you know, you have the computer-generated voice, and they did a demo of this. Uh, what you want to do is, the computer-generated voice is pretty good. They're based on real voice samples. Mm -hmm. Siri's the same way. Sure. Uh, so is Amazon's Echo. But what they then do is they have a human record in a natural way, the same sentence, and they generate what they call prosody out of that, which is, I guess the best way to describe it, a natural human inflection, which they then lay on it. Hmm. One of the things they showed at the uh, keynote, they got John Legend to do a lot of recording, and then Sundar Pichai asked the assistant, what's, my, what's coming up today? And in John Legend's voice, it did the computer-generated answer, hmm. and it was very good. So a lot of, I don't know why, but I guess people got scared because it got a lot of, Google got a lot of heat. Yeah. Well, you saw what Adobe did a few months ago, right? With the fakes? The audio ed editing. Yeah, yeah, how yeah, they yeah, can yeah. put in any word they want. They re recorded all of Obama's voice and then yes. they can just type a sentence out and Obama says it. Says whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I honestly am looking forward to this because it means I can retire in a couple of years and <laughs> yeah. you'll never know. Right. Right. If we go suddenly At least for to audio, audio podcasting, yeah, yeah, you'll, we, you'll if we sad. suddenly go to audio podcasting, I'm not saying anything, but that's what I'm on. Kind of amazing, on actually. An island somewhere. I know, right? Yeah, the the computer will do a better job than we do. Reading the news, yeah, and giving their opinion, yeah. And they got it. God knows they have enough voice samples for me to to make something. No like bad that. jokes. <laughs> I mean, could be great. No, they have to write in the bad jokes. They're gonna need the dad jokes, or it wouldn't be Leo. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, I was going to show you. So Google sold this robot company. Yes. Uh, Boston Dynamics. They sold it to SunSun, Sun, right. to SoftBank. Right. They were at the TechCrunch Disrupt, and they announced that they're going to sell one of these uh, robots, the mm -hmm. dog version of the robot. It's called Spot Mini to home users. Why isn't that a cat? Why is that the dog version? I don't know why you would want this in your house. This is terrifying. This is, uh, they say it's their quietest robot ever, but it's, it's, it's not, a little out. What, what's the utility? Um, for if you're lonely? I, I don't mean, know. There's a lot better things. This is autonomous too at this point. It, notice how it's avoiding walls, it's making turns because it's doing this all from a navigated, uh, pre-navigated map. This is kind of sped up. Let me, let me show you the uh, slow, uh, go back to the slowed down so you can, what? It can climb stairs. Oh Lord! So I'm curious. Like, do, is there a sales page for this yet? Like, Not what, yet. What are they selling here, though? I don't know. Wouldn't you really want this? Does it bring you the mail? Yeah, sure. Actually, you came up with the best use for it. I said to put fur on it. Well, that's one thing that would make it more friendly. <laughs> oh, I said to ride it. <laughs> to ride yeah. it. Yeah, you should be able to ride, ride it. it. Yeah, you need to put some kind of fur type thing on the outside. Although that might be even creepier. <laughs> Ride my robot horse. If you could ride that around town, it'll have like a five minute battery life at that point, though. It's like lugging us around. <laughs> there it is. Wait a minute, Wait, they do have a sale arm? page. Is that for an it? arm on top of it? Yeah, it can open doors. So, one of the things about oh, I saw oh, that don't one. get that Hit one. Hit play on that. that That's cool. You. Have you seen that one? No, let's see. Yeah, this one's sweet. It could bite you. So, I love it. They have these all lined up and then they activate one. This is in their office. Oh, man. They just look like they can kill you. It's they very all Terminator. do, don't they? Look at that. What's that thing in the right? I don't Jeez like the Louis. pointy nose on that one. They're not clearly that, whoever... The back one you can ride. The human... Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you can definitely ride that all thing. All it needs is stirrups and a cowboy hat. Wow. If you could gallop with that, that would be a lot of fun, Wouldn't actually. It? You know what? I think, you've, I think you've nailed it. This is better than Westworld. <laughs> <laughs> this is the beginning of Westworld, this is, the be this is how Westworld started. Like, yeah. The thing is, this stuff has, happens faster than... it. Both, you know, that, what was the, the line, and I can't remember who said it, technology simultaneously happens slower than you want and faster than you expect. Mm. And I think that that's where we're kind of at that inflection point with yeah. these kinds of... There it is, there oh it is. Oh, Lord. It can, what is it doing? <laughs> that's a, it's dancing. <laughs> I want this in the house. <laughs> Why do they put a dinosaur head on it? Why? That's kind of cool. Oh, I know why. So it can do the dishes? Hey, if it can do the dishes, that's, I'm all in. Yeah, done. Oh, yeah, that's going to It's going to pour you the wine? First, you know the first 20 times they did this, it crushed the right. glass in its little robot mouth. Cut that in. <laughs> a and W. <laughs> Very good. What's the price point? These, these things have to be like... A hundred grand, like... Well, it's got to be expensive. Yeah. 
See, I whenever I see things like that, I go back to things oh. like Oh, the banana's got it. Did you see that? It slipped on the banana? Oh. Oh, oh no, but this is just showing see, how you can get back I don't up. Think, I think this is not a good thing to humiliate these guys. No, you because this is gonna be archived on the internet, and the first thing they're it, gonna do the first thing the robot's gonna, gonna do watch is watch this YouTube footage and say, why did you do that right. to us? You Oh my god. I don't like how well it climbs stairs. And then you saw this, they've got robots now, this is on my screen, where they, they, you can feed you. Look at this. This is awesome. It's taking a Cheeto out of the bag. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. That, wow, that, that one, that, that, that one researcher they need did to, not expect that to happen. <laughs> they need to work on that one. At first, just I thought a, it was one of those radio shack bit. arms, you know, that was going to do it nice and slow. <laughs> Okay. Wow. Oh, All right. my. So you were talking a little bit about how you're excited about the digital wellness stuff. You know, it was yeah. funny because Apple had shareholders, which I've never heard of this, who went to Apple and said, you got to make your product not so addictive. Right. I mean, we can all feel it, though, right? You feel it. I'm up at 3 in the morning saying I don't want to be looking at this, and I am. Yeah. And I don't care if it's not blue. I'm still looking at it. Right. Yeah. They fixed that problem. You're still looking it at it. doesn't improve it. Yeah, I mean, apparently you're supposed to release more melatonin if there's less blue. I'm still and awake looking still at awake it. I don't care if it's blue it, or orange, I'm looking at it. Well, these features are cool, though, because they tell you if you've been using your apps too much. They, they start to gray out the icon as you use them too much. I mean, there's a lot of subtle little hints to say back away from the phone. You There's now a setting on YouTube that you can say, Hey, if I've watched this after three hours, please tell me to yeah. take a break and go outside. Well, you can do it for all apps now. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's, that's the app great. timer he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. Here. You're close to your daily time limit. That is so brilliant. I'm going to use this all the time. Shush is cool. That's actually something the Motorola X had. Yeah, just flip it over and it yeah. mutes it everything. Yeah. Here's the one I think is most interesting. Uh, they call this wind down. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and show this. And when that time arrives, it will switch on do not disturb and fade the screen to grayscale. Yeah. I learned this from you. Which is far less stimulating for the brain. The grayscale and thing? Yes. The Didn't you post down. a thing saying make okay. your screen black and white, We're it's less addictive? I might have tweeted it, but I, I got it from someone else that... Yeah, I'm sure that. you didn't invent it, but I still. I did not invent that. Uh, I tried it, and it is. Your, your phone is so much more boring if it's black and white. <laughs> yeah. It is not at all compelling. Yeah, the icons jump out. They invite you in to yeah, use the them. It's like, it's, it's too much. So this is great, though. That's what this will do. I bet you Apple does the same thing. I have a feeling this is coming for Apple as well. Oh, yeah. WWDC, I think they'll announce oh, something. Yeah. Well, that's the funny thing. In Android P, they copied the best feature of uh, iOS on the iPhone 10. You could swipe past. You don't have to have a back button anymore. Nobody knows this. Nobody you, knows. Should you, I show you? I show this. Because you showed this to me, and I'm like, Kevin what? Kevin went, what? Yeah, like you're I've never magician. seen that before. So you, this is an iPhone 10. At the bottom, it doesn't, you know, one of the reasons you can't tell it can do this is there's no indicator. But you can just swipe to previous apps. I feel like you're a magician now. It's this like, is amazing. But that's the best feature of it's iPhone cool. 10. I, did, I didn't even know that. Because you don't, you, the iPhone never had a back button. In fact, remember we used to mock Android because they had a back button. Right, right. But this, you do need a back button. This is a fabulous feature. So Android P has that. <laughs> It's like, as soon as Apple figured it out, Apple, Google said, They're yeah, all we, copying each yeah. other. And that's okay. It's okay. Right? Yeah. I'm not Ish. one of those people that's gonna say, oh, you copied Apple, or oh, Apple, you copied. No, it's, it makes it better for everybody. Yeah. All right, uh, you are gonna talk about cryptocurrency. Yeah, I'm we're very gonna talk excited. about buying crypto, securing it, secure wallets, uh, all that good stuff. Because I need some help. Y you lost a lot of money. A little money. Like, uh, what's Bitcoin at right now? Nine grand, ten? What's okay. it at right now? So I lost seventy thousand dollars. <laughs> you still have the wallet file. I there, still have the still file. Hope. I just there's can't get into hope. it. We've maybe you can help Leo's me. Password. Maybe you can help me. We're also eighty-four hundred gonna... bucks right now. <laughs> oh, see, I, you know, it was only really an issue when it was up to twenty thousand. Well, here's the deal, though. You had Bitcoin, and you would have gotten that hard fork, so you would have also had Bitcoin Cash I do. as well. I have both. No, but th with those coins that you lost, you, that would have forked as but well. But I could do that now, right? If, if I could get, get into in. it, yeah, I could. So you, you have to help me with that too. I think you go to. You I don't go know your to, password. No, no. I mean, if I could get in. Yeah, if we can get in, I help you with the fork stuff. Yeah, we can do then because you have the new Bitcoin, you have. Yeah, you have. Pull that back up again. We can see how much Bitcoin cash is worth. So you would have uh, uh, fifteen about fifteen hundred bucks worth of the equal amount of coins. So if you had ten coins, so it's another ten what? grand more than that. 
Fifteen hundred coins. So yeah, fifteen grand. You know who's really mad at me? My What's wife. That? Yeah, I bet. <laughs> she said it's a lot. And of money. my son Henry keeps saying, "Dad, have you unlocked your wallet yet?" Because I told him if you can unlock it, I'll give you a bitcoin. And what did you did you say? Like, did you give me any of your old passwords? Like, no. did you give me any help at all? No. But, but but you're gonna help me. You're gonna help me. I'm if not giving you a If you can break this encryption, yeah. If you can just break hard my, one. my strong public key crypto, and we're gonna talk with Dale Baskin of uh, DP Review about 360 degree That's cool. photography. Yeah, very very cool. Got, I checked out got, the camera. We got one of his uh, one of his recommendations here. But first, let's talk about Rocket Mortgage. I know Kevin Rose doesn't need to get a home loan when he wants to buy a house, but maybe you do. I know I do. In fact, when we bought our house four years ago, we did the old fashioned thing. You know, went go to the bank, and you and you say, "Please, can I have some money?" And he says, "Sure." Here's first. The funny thing is, he had a clipboard, and he went like this, and he said, "Well, let's look at some of the rates." They were on printed on like a daily printout like a phone book of rates and then he says here's the 20 page application go home and fill it out and you have to go to the attic you got to get pay stubs you got to find out what you you know where you used to live all this stuff all this research and the worst part about doing this i don't know why and i think it was maybe because i don't know why i don't know why maybe because they didn't like the way i look but they kept coming back and saying well now we'd like to know We'd like bank statements from 2010. Do you have those? And two months it took us to get a home loan for the house we live in today. Not anymore. Not anymore. Next time, I'm going to Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Quicken Loans, best lender in the country, number one lender in the country, not only in volume of loans, but in customer satisfaction. <laughs> Eight years in a row, number one as primary mortgage origination, according to J.D. Power. Number one since 2010. Four years in a row for mortgage servicing. And the nice thing about it is they're geeks. Dan Harmon and his crew there at Quicken Loans, they are technologists, and they realize this whole idea yeah. of going to a bank, dopey. I love it when companies do this. They take yes. these big, old, kludgy, 20-page process. And they fix and it. They fix it. Yeah, it's great. So this, is, you, this, uh, this process is so easy. It, you can do it on your phone. You could do it. It's so fast, you could do it at an open house. You answer a few basic questions you already know the answer to. Then they go out, because they have relationships with all the financial institutions, they go out, get what they need, crunch the numbers based on your income, your assets, and your credit. They will tell you this is what you qualify for. You choose the rate, the term, the down payment. By the way, they have excellent rates. They have all the rates. They have every possible loan. So you're going to get a great choice. And all of that, remember, it took me two months to get that. All of that takes 10 minutes or less and you do it on your phone. You could do it in an open house. You could do it on your couch. It is awesome. I want you to go to rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. Start, get the account set up. That way it'll take less, it'll just take a few minutes. And the next time you're at a house and you say, oh, we really, this is beautiful. The price is right. Let's buy this. You can show the realtor before you leave that open house. We're approved. Crazy. And they have, they have for the old fashioned realtors, they have a button that says, print a letter that you can show the huh. realtor. So you do it pre- Finding a house, you can. Do you it. could do it now. You could pre you, the old way was you find the house first, yeah, and then you have to kind of. Yeah, so you don't know because you, you you don't you don't. I just pay you with Bitcoin. Money. But <laughs> but what used to be is you would do something called pre qualify because right. then you go in with a letter. I remember that. Say yeah. yeah, you remember that? I'm good for the money, and that does you know that's important if you're buying a house. It's really a seller's market these days. Mm -hmm. You need to go. I've lost houses because we didn't have that pre-qualification letter, all of that. This is the easiest way. Rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. They're an equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. NMLS, consumeraccess.org, number 3030. Rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. Apply simply, understand fully, mortgage confidently. And we thank them so much for making the new screensavers possible. Rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. All right, let's get Dale Baskin up on the uh, Super Spectro Viewatron. <laughs> Hey, Dale. Hey, Dale. Hey, Leo. Hey, Kevin. It's great to be back. Do you know Kevin Rose, Dale? We've never met before. This is the first time. Well, I'm a big fan of your site, so... Fantastic. Good to yeah. hear. Yeah. You, you have met other members of our team, like Alex Lindsay, because you, you and Alex were talking about that, what was it, $60,000, 360-degree camera Nokia made? Yeah, it was a couple of years ago at NAB. I ran into Alex, and, and he was talking a lot about this Nokia camera in the earlier days of 360 photography, uh, this was a bit of a beast. I think it had something like 30 cameras on it, and it had spatial audio, and it cost something like $60,000, but it was pretty good. <laughs> Nokia stopped selling it, so it mustn't have been much. <laughs> Although I know Alex bought three. Phones. Alex had three or four, as I remember. You don't, you don't find those at the Best Buy. 
But there is something it did not. that that the cameras we're going to talk about won't do, and that you said it, the spatial audio. And uh, it's one thing to take a 360-degree image. Are there any cameras now that will also do 360-degree audio? Uh, there are various ones. In fact, you have the Ricoh Theta there on the counter in front of you. Yeah, um, this is my, my first 360-degree camera. That, that has more of a surround audio. Yeah. And it turns out that's pretty important with 360 video at least. So that if you are watching a video with your headset or even on YouTube and you turn around, the sound comes from the proper hmm. direction. This is kind of cool. This 360 was the first I bought. It was the first one under 400 bucks. And the way they did it, they just have two cameras with super fisheye picture lens, right? So this is everything in front, everything in back. And then you use so uh, software, special software from Ricoh to stitch it together. And I loved it because it would stitch your hand out of the picture. Because that's one thing about 360 cameras, you, whatever's at the bottom always looks kind of weird, mm -hmm. right? Kind of. Yes, strange. most of these will create a, a little bit of a bubble around which everything gets stitched out. So right. it looks fairly natural. So this was a first generation. And you say you still like it? Oh, we still like that. There's a newer version. It's called the Theta V, which is higher resolution, better audio. Ah. Uh, it turns out part of the reason this one is so popular is its simplicity. Right. Um, anybody can use it. You don't have to understand how it works. You hold it up. You press the button. You look at your phone. The images appear, and you hit share to go to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever your shareable uh, destination of choice happens to be. So one question I had about these cameras in general that has stopped me from ever buying one is the software or the output of it, is that require proprietary software to then play around in? Or is that a standard, is it an open standard? There are different answers to that question. Uh, most manufacturers do have some kind of solution, whether it's a software on the desktop or an app on a smartphone that does all of the stitching for you. Some right. of them just do it in camera. Uh, there are certainly sources, uh, open source software packages that will let you take data from any of these Here's and do your own stitching. Here's but Tokyo. to be honest, yeah. For simplicity, it's just easier to use the manufacturer's yeah. software. Most. My biggest concern is, you know, 10 years from now, we try and have view incompatible our images, pictures. incompatible. Well, sh you saw, show it again, uh, Anthony. Before you process it, this is what the pictures look like. Actually, on the Theta, it looks even worse. It looks like two spheres hmm. uh, left and right. It's and like VR before you actually go into VR. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, once, very much, very but, much. Yeah, once you convert it. Uh, and the good news, though, is YouTube and Facebook both support these, generally support these formats. Right? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, sometimes it's browser specific. I know for a while I could not for the life of me get any of it to work on Safari on a Macintosh. That seems to have worked itself out a little bit. Um, so if you ever run into these online and it just doesn't work, switch to something like Chrome and very possibly it'll work for you. Wow, it's cool stuff, though. Look at those photos. I use, I don't know what you think of this one, Dale, the, Geel, the latest Gear 360 from Samsung uh, uh, came out last year, I think. Mm -hmm. Is yeah, that I okay? I have that one personally, but uh, one of my colleagues has it, really likes it. You know, for the most part, one truism of all of these consumer cameras is they'll all take a reasonably good 360 photo it's not going to be the level of quality, the level of detail you're accustomed to on, a, uh, say, a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it comes down to the resolution, right? This is with the Gear 360. We were in Japan at a... a so beautiful. This is the most famous uh, of all the Japanese gardens at the <laughs> Adachi Museum. Uh, it's consisted, cons consistently won the best you know, garden prize. And what's neat about it, and you really can only see it in a 360, is they bought this hillside. This is a hillside outside the property that they bought so that nobody would put antennas yeah. or towers. And you see, uh, you can hardly see this, but there's a little waterfall oh, it's right beautiful. there. It is a, uh, this is something that a regular image does not capture. Mm -hmm. But a 360 does, a very, I think, a pretty good job of giving you a sense of being there. That was with the Gear 360. So is that sure. what the difference is, is in resolution? What is the difference in quality? Well, what you'll get with a more expensive camera is probably, quite literally, more cameras. So most ah. of the sensors used in these things are fairly off the shelf. Individual companies are not making them. So if you have two lenses facing 180 degrees apart from each other, you'll get more resolution if you have four cameras at the corners that are doing more overlap, <laughs> giving you more resolution, which is why the Nokia we talked about was so nice. I don't remember the number of cameras that had, but it was like a oh, ball. A ton of cameras. Them. But that's why yeah. it was also why it was $60,000. That's why it's expensive as well. Yeah, yeah. So what do you like these days? What's the, what are the better cameras these days for people if they want to get into this? 
Yeah, so these days the thing we're really watching are what we're thinking of as the next generation 360 cameras. Uh, the challenge with the original ones is your uh, your footage, your photos or your video require some level of user participation. Um, either you need somebody to put on one of these and, and start turning their head in a circle, which isn't always easy, or somebody has to go onto a page and drag around. And that can be really fun, except sometimes they actually look exactly the opposite direction of where the interesting thing is. Mm. So there's a number of new cameras, and two of the ones I have with me today are from a company called Rilo, which I have on my left, and GoPro, uh, which you've heard of, I'm sure, the GoPro Fusion. These are also 360 cameras, but where they differ is in the software, and the software is what's really making the difference. Um, if you can imagine... I'm still taking a 360 photo or video with this, but instead of requiring my user to search around and find what's interesting, I can go in with a simple app on an iPhone or an Android phone, and I can essentially select an area that would be a 16 by nine high definition video area, and I can tell the camera where to point. Um, and I, I think we've got an example coming up here of a skier. I gave this camera right here to one of my friends when he went skiing. And he literally wow, held it in that. his hand going down the slopes. The camera is not moving here. The person holding it is moving left and right. The skier ahead is moving left and right. And he basically went in afterwards, tapped on that skier and just said, follow this object. Oh, Could wow. you then look around while you're looking at this or are you locked into that? Well, you have different options for how to export. You can still export it in a way where people have that option, yes. Right. Uh, but what this does is it really allows you to get a very professional look, something you can share very easily on social media that looks great, and it just works. It looks fantastic like you were panning around with a camera yeah. as you were skiing. Well, also, the, I gotta say, this is a good camera. The resolution looks 4K. I mean, it looks really high quality. Yeah, if you look at it on a 50-inch television screen, you'll be able to tell. But the reality is the vast majority of people are going to look at this on a phone screen, right. maybe a tablet. Right. And so if it's a little below resolution, nobody will notice. The other thing I like about that is you can look at it uh, normally. So, I mean, that's, yes. as Kevin pointed out, that's one of the disadvantages of this is it's kind of a weird format and mm -hmm. it requires some effort on the part of the user. That one, you just uh, look at like a TV, right? Yeah. And so can you uh, then yeah. just export it as like a standard movie file at that point? Yes, absolutely. That's you cool. So you pick your path. a standard movie right. file. In fact, I think uh, we're bringing up a, a video here that may actually show how the selection is done. In this case, uh, just tapping. Oh, that's neat. You just oh, hit wow. follow this. You can say follow this. Oh, so it's not even a very manual process. It's, wow, wow. Right. You, you, don't have, cool. you don't have to navigate it. You say follow this object, and it just follows the object. How much is this camera? Uh, these are grand. a little more expensive. <laughs> this is about $4.99 uh, for the Rilo, okay. which is really our favorite right now because it's so simple. Anybody can use it. And then the GoPro is around $6.99. Honestly, it's a little bit better quality, probably more powerful software. Uh, but for convenience and ease of use, we love this Rilo. Cool. So the GoPro, a little more expensive, a little better quality, a little better software. Yeah. yeah. That's the GoPro Fusion. The GoPro Fusion, right. And uh, if I turn it sideways, you can see it's actually got the two lenses on either side. Okay. So it's, okay. I, yeah, I'm thinking maybe I should upgrade that Samsung 360 to one of these. Yeah. These look pretty Yeah, cool. these new cameras are a ton of fun if you haven't played with them. Uh, the ability to essentially direct where the camera is pointing after the fact and make it look like a professional cameraman is pointing things around on a gimbal is amazing. Look, can I ask you, like, what, what do you use this for outside of, like, for me, I think vacations, no-brainer. Yeah, that's the only time like, I ever use it. Action sports, no-brainer. Yeah, I guess. Like, skiing, snowboarding, things like that. You but use it a lot the first just, day. Yeah. Right. That's, like, well, that's for instance, Zelda, your baby, you want pictures of your baby, but do you really need 360-degree pictures of your baby? Right. No. Especially when the house is torn apart like yeah, it's You don't want to see back, back there. Everywhere. Yeah. yeah. But it, it can be a very immersive experience. Uh, I know one of the things that we did on our site when the Amazon Spears open with, I don't know if everyone's familiar with those, but they're these giant spherical biosphere type buildings in Seattle. One of our photographers actually went in, oh, um, and I think on the bottom of this page you have right here, uh, there's a YouTube video. He actually <sighs> walked through the spheres with the 360 camera on. And it's really an amazing way to experience the spheres. If you can't come to Seattle, if you can't come visit them, you can literally do a walk through. And oh, as the see. camera's going through, you can decide where to look. And you this can see what that good. looks That's like. Cool. Yeah, I, when I was in the Galapagos last year, I brought my uh, my Samsung 360, and that's a case where somebody may not get there, but they can have an experience of what it's like mm -hmm. to walk through these islands or ride in a Zodiac and look for penguins. 
in a 360 means you have a little agency as the viewer as to what to look at. Mm -hmm. I think there's a, it's a specialty product. Yeah. But it's it's kind of cool. I like it that you could play it back on YouTube and Facebook now. So yeah. You don't have to yeah, wear one make of those it very easy. Visors. Well, then you just upload it and you don't have to worry about maintaining the software. It's, right. it's there to stay. It's there to as stay. As long as they're around. As long as YouTube supports. Right, exactly. Yeah, who knows what's going to happen to yeah. Google. And, and Google, <laughs> excuse me, not Google, but uh, GoPro has a very interesting way of allowing you to do it. You don't even have to press that little button you saw to have it follow something. You can play back the video and essentially just follow it with your phone as it's going. Oh, and crazy. based on where you point it, it will pan. Wow. Oh, man. Another, Which would you get? Gadget. <laughs> Which would you get? <laughs> You know what? He's gonna I've been buy recommending one. the Rilo to people. Okay. Uh, I think it, it's so compact. In fact, if I take it out of its case here, I can show you. It's tiny. It really is yeah. very tiny. Yeah. Uh, this is just a case with a handle. It's so simple to use that I can hand it to somebody and say, just hold this thing up, press the button. It actually doesn't even matter if they point it in the right place because you can decide later where you want to point it. Yeah, but the, the thing is, like, if you're holding it right in front of you, it's just going to get... Yeah. You, you got to kind of have to go like I, this, though, right? You know you that I'm taking right a picture... When I'm taking do, a do picture with my Samsung, you know I'm taking it because I'm holding it like the Statue right. of Liberty right. over my right. head, and you feel kind of like a dork as you're walking is around. Is there backpacks with, like, a little thing on? Or That's worse! I know, <laughs> the, saying, the like, great thing is it has... If I can uh, get this thing back down, you probably can't see it very well here, but it's basically got a standard GoPro attachment. Oh, mm. So if you've got something that you can... Attach a GoPro helmet. or an action yeah. camera to, you can attach this just as easily. So skiing, climbing, kayaking, they even have a waterproof case if you want to take it underwater. Um, it really is a great, I mean, it's essentially an action camera or a vacation camera, yeah. um, as you said, but it's a way of capturing those types of events and sharing them in either a more immersive or a more flexible way than you had before. Yeah, cool. I think I might get the Rilo. $4.99? Four ninety nine for the Rilo. It's a fantastic product, but this GoPro is no slouch either, yeah, as you yeah. would imagine. Two hundred bucks more for the GoPro. Yeah, a couple hundred dollars more. Yeah. Well, Dale, always a pleasure. You're you're really a great inspiration to us. You make me spend money every time you're on. <laughs> I guess Not necessarily our goal, but uh, it sounds like you've got gear acquisition yeah, syndrome. I have gas. Uh, yeah, I do, absolutely. And of course, before I buy anything, I always go to dpreview.com. It's a great it, is, site. it is actually my I'll Bible. So many years yeah. it's been my source. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah it's our Bible. Uh, thank you so much. It's great to see you once again, Dale. All right. Thank you, guys. Take care. Thanks. Coming up, we're going to do some, uh, some cryptocurrency yeah, stuff. Yeah, let's do it. Kevin is the cryptocurrency master. He's going to show us everything you need to know, including. <laughs> Better ways to save, to secure your cryptocurrency so you don't forget your password. Like this guy. But first, <laughs> Jason Howell spent last week at Google I.O. this past week. And uh, it turns out one of his favorite spots is something called the Sandbox Tent. Watch. Google really knows how to throw a party or a developer conference. Honestly, if you've ever been to Google I.O. before, you might have a hard time finding a difference between the two. It's a blast to say the least. One of my favorite parts of Google I.O. is perusing the sandbox tents. Those are themed areas that showcase some of the more interesting examples of cutting edge uses of its newest technology. So I've compiled a list of my nine favorite discoveries while roaming through the Google I.O. sandboxes. Number one, a robot made this poster for me. That's right. This unique piece of art was designed for me alone inside the Google Assistant tent uh, where they were showcasing the Assistant SDK for hardware devices. This giant plotter that was armed with four color markers was connected to an Assistant speaker below it, meaning anyone could bark a command like, draw purple squares, and the plotter would respond. And in the end, you walked away with a robotically creative work of art. Number two, in the accessibility tent, Google showed off its liftware utensil line to make eating easier for those who might be suffering from conditions like Parkinson's disease. The handle of this liftware steady spoon has a sensor inside that detects rapid hand tremor movements and then activates two motors to counteract the shaking that will then stabilize the spoon in use. They also showed the liftware level that's aimed at those with limited hand and arm mobility that actually keeps the spoon level at all times regardless of of how you move it. Number three, also in the accessibility tent was a demonstration of the new Lookout app for Pixel devices, newly announced on Oreo or Android P. Launching this summer, Lookout speaks aloud what it sees, helping those with visual impairments hear and understand the world around them. It can even read text from a book or announce where the exit sign is located in the room. Shift three, 
Number four, similar to Lookout, is Google's updated AR app. That's Google Lens. The update, which releases by the end of this month, has a new active scanning mode for recognizing objects that it sees on the fly and then pulling back search results that match to them. So if you think that blouse is to die for, but you don't know where to find it, just point Lens at it and you might get lucky or at the very least find a knockoff that's nearly as good. Number five. Also in the AR tent was a gameplay demonstration of one of Google's new announcements for AR Core called Cloud Anchor. This is how AR can become a shared experience on multiple devices. In this case, two separate phones connect to and interact with the same virtual objects in the surrounding space, making something like this two-player versus style catapult game possible. It was a ton of fun to play. Number six, and also utilizing Cloud Anchors, is an app called Just a Line that kind of felt a little like tilt brush in the sense that you can draw on the virtual space that surrounds you in a three-dimensional canvas. The Cloud Anchors come into play by allowing anyone with a phone to participate in the same space. Everyone's just kind of scribbling to fill in the area and you can walk around and get up close. I'm super pumped to see what third-party developers do with this Cloud Anchor technology. Number seven, in the experiments tent, something called Move Mirror. There's a tiny phone camera that's driving a human-sized screen. You, a human, stand in front of the phone camera and strike a pose, any pose, and the TensorFlow pattern matching algorithm will locate images from its 90,000 image library that match your pose. They even created for me a short animated GIF to prove that I am indeed a big nerd. Number eight. Also in the experiments tent was this nifty piece of hardware called NSynth Super. NSynth, or Neurosynthesizer, uses neural networks to combine the qualities of four distinct sounds into entirely new models, depending on where your finger is dragged on the XY control surface. It's powered by a Raspberry Pi underneath, they told me, but it's not yet a consumer product, though everything needed to build one is open source. I'm thinking maybe something for know-how. Uh, by the way, you know what I want for my birthday. And finally, number nine was found in the artificial intelligence tent, and it's something you can play with right now, and you'll want to because it's really fun. It's a game called Symantris. There's actually a couple of games, but it's based on a slightly modified version of Google's smart reply technology used to create this game that highlights a word that's then stacked on top of other words, and your job is to name the first word that comes to your mind based on that highlighted word. If you draw a good enough connection between the two words, that word is then eliminated and you get to continue, but you don't want that stack to get too tall. Do a search for Symantris and say goodbye to your day. My name is Jason Howell and you can find me talking all about Google and Android on, well, all about Android and Tech News Weekly here on twit.tv. Very neat. This is the kind of stuff you see every day, though, probably, right? What? This, these Like of innovative new, new yeah. stuff? A lot of these are just hobbies, though, and not really companies. That's what they kind of look like. Yeah. Yeah, somebody's 20% time. Exactly. Or, yeah, yeah. Nevertheless, some of them do become companies. That's true. How do you, as a venture capitalist, because I know you still do some investing. Sure. And you've been very successful in your previous investments. How do you know if something's going to be a success or not? Honestly, in the early days, it's it's based largely on the entrepreneur. Not the product. Not the product. I mean, somewhat you have to love the product or the idea in general, but you have to love the founder more. It's the team. It's the team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's more bet on, on the team. And, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Because they may have to pivot anyway, right? That's right. You never know. Oftentimes do. Yeah, you've pivoted a few times. A handful. <laughs> Quite a few times. <laughs> uh, let's talk cryptocurrency. Yes. Now, before we get into this, you're not a cryptocurrency buyer. I mean, you don't have a bunch of Bitcoin in your closet. Uh, I don't. No, I, I let somebody handle that uh, yeah. in terms of um, just doing a fund. That you buys mentioned there's my... Bitcoin he or cryptocurrency hedge funds. Hedge yeah. funds? yeah, exactly. Well, so my understanding of a hedge fund is it's something to, I don't know, what is a hedge fund? <laughs> I don't really, <laughs> my understanding comes from watching TV, so I probably don't have the best understanding of it. But it's an investment vehicle that's designed to do well yeah, when so other vehicles are not doing so well. Well, these, these, these guys are going off, are going out and buying uh, currencies um, either before they're released, yeah. so like pre-ICO, yeah. um, or at, you, at the ICO. And you trust them and their judgment. They're and, just connected and yeah. running into all the founders and doing all the heavy lifting. So you pay a fee for that, yeah. but they go off 
and go out and do it on your behalf. It's probably not a bad idea. Well, so it, also it just like you don't store any of the keys. Like someone yeah. could hold me for ransom, and I don't have any coins to give them. Like I, I just like that that fact that. Jeez, don't kidnap off. Kevin. It's happened. Did I, you hear about that guy that got kidnapped? No. Million dollars they held him up for. And they wanted Bitcoin. Bitcoin, and they they sent. This was probably a couple months back. <laughs> they sent him a million bucks. Now and, it's gotten out of hand. It's it's gotten crazy. <laughs> I'll it's, take it's scary. Bitcoin. Well, the advantage of Bitcoin, like cash, it's anonymous. No, yeah. no one well, knows. Well, you have a bunch of it, and you're located over here in Petaluma, and it's there's not a lot of security I can't here. Get to it. Yeah. So if you wanted to. So I think a lot of the people watching. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You don't around. kidnap me. I don't, <laughs> don't know my password. Leo. That would be the most pathetic thing. I'm kidnapped. I'm sitting there <laughs> and in you my have underwear, no currency? tied up, and I'm saying, "But I don't know the password. <laughs> no, no, I can't give you anything. I'll give you the wallet. You can figure out the password." So most people don't do what I did. But this was early on, and there was, things like Coinbase didn't exist. Yeah. I just downloaded software, created a wallet, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then gave people my number. You have a public number, which can also be a QR code, and people can donate. Right. In this case, it was donating to Twip, or people can give you money based on that number. Um, nowadays, you, would you do it that way? Uh, in terms of like if you wanted to get into you, a, a, a cryptocurrency would you create your own wallet um uh, i would probably start by well it depends on which currency you want to purchase i think a lot of people say well i'm just going to coinbase and yeah so can create an account there right it's the easiest way to, to do things for sure now I mean, there are people who used mount gox in that's the right. past they lost every bit of their that's Bitcoin right. because mount gox disappeared and that we've seen this happen before. So there's a certain amount of trust involved. That's right. With giving somebody your Yeah, wallet. and for me, you know, I've used uh, Coinbase a lot in the past to purchase, but then I immediately move it off site and into my own kind of cold storage using something like one of these hardware keys. Oh, interesting. Um, or, so you can do that. You don't have yeah, to leave the wallet. That's there. right. That's okay. right. So you can just transfer it out and get it out of there right away. And their limitation is that they only sell what? Bitcoin, Ethereum. Yeah, uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. That's it. That's it. For now. They've announced they're going to do a bunch more, and How they'll probably support some of the tokens I, as well. I've, I've seen, there's more, there's hundreds of Yeah, these. I mean, here's crypto, uh, cryptocurrency market cap, and I mean, there's, there's several great thousands. Yeah. Uh, 1,610 how... total cryptocurrencies <laughs> that they're tracking. But this is a, a great example of a site that you can come to, and let's just say um, you've heard about something, like let's say Neil, for example. And you, or let's use Monero. This is one of the really privacy coins that are out there. And you're like, I want to own some Monero. How do I go out and buy this? Well, you can't buy it on Coinbase, right? right? Like it's not available. So what you do is you just click on the markets tab and you can see where it's trading. And then what I do is I typically look for um, some of these uh, trading partners that have high volume. So see, these are some of the big ones here. You know, Binance is doing $7 million I wanted a day. to buy some Stellar Lumens. Let's, I, let's I couldn't, at that. but I set up a... Uh, Coinbase account and then bought some Bitcoin and then sold and then went to Binance, which does sell right. Stellar. Yeah, so Lumens, here's Stellar right here. And then you buy, so it's a complicated right. process. Right, so, so you'd have to set up a Binance account. Yeah, I have Binance um, and Coinbase. Right, so you start with Coinbase, like you said. You get and they take transfer. dollars at Coinbase, so you give them dollars. Right, you can use a credit card, you can use a bank account, things like that. Or, yeah, and then you buy Bitcoin. That's right. And then you transfer it to somebody else or Binance? Yeah, so you transfer it to Binance. So if you look here, but check this out. See where it says pair? Yeah. So you can see that there's a Stellar Bitcoin pair. So you can go straight from Bitcoin directly into Stellar. Ah, okay. So you wouldn't go to Coinbase and buy something like Litecoin because they're not going to be paired up. Yeah. You'd have to then go Litecoin, Bitcoin, and then Stellar. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a lot of, lot of hurdles to That's get great. through. But then where do you hold this? So you'd have to set up a wallet locally, right? Like so where what do you is hold a the what is a Bitcoin wallet? It's not like a wallet where you have money. No, it's just in a it. piece of software that's running on your computer. It's software, right? So you have your private. And ultimately, keys. it's a file, right? Yeah, exactly. It's a file. It's a single file, typically a .dat file, wallet.dat, and uh, it's encrypted and stored locally on your computer. So and you in fact, hold there's the keys for that. There's no money in the wallet.dat file. There's merely your private key. Private key. It's a right. private key file, just like a PGP private right, key file exactly. would be. And what you do uh, as when I was trying to recover my wallet is you then load that wallet dot that file in there it has to download the entire ledger the right. blockchain of transactions at least for bitcoin which is hundreds of gigabytes unless it's a light wallet and it just points to the network some of them then, are a little better than that's this. right yeah they've figured out this was a liability well it takes forever it can take <laughs> yeah, multiple days. days yeah when i was setting then, up the arrow it was like three days and then it has to walk through the ledger and look for your transactions and find your transactions <laughs> That's right. and at the end of another day it'll say oh yeah i found 7.57 bitcoin right now what's your password well yeah, yeah exactly you'd have yeah. to have your password first so what's a better that. way to do this 
So there's a few things. First thing I want to recommend to everyone is that if you're serious about this stuff and you start buying it, um, you should get a separate email account for where you have all of your communications uh, related Why to this. Why is that? Well, if you think about it, the ways to unlock your account and to reset it are typically by email or a text message to your phone. And so if you have a Coinbase account, those emails are going to be sent to your primary email account. And a lot of people are going to know what your primary email right. is because you're using it right. to have conversations. So what I recommend doing, get a separate Gmail account. They're free. Yeah, they're free. Create something obscure so no don't one's going to guess it. Don't make it Kevin Rose at gmail.com. Right, or Leo's Crypto at Gmail. Yeah, yeah, that's even better, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, enable their extra enhanced security. Okay. So that requires one of these guys here. These are different hardware keys. This one slides into a USB. This one is Bluetooth here. These and, these are also crypto-based. These, right. these are basically uh, key validations. I have a YubiKey. And a, and a Bluetooth-based ones, they, they require you have one Bluetooth for phones like iPhones that don't right. support uh, a USB port um, or NFC. Yeah, so they, they'll have, uh, Google will actually recommend you these three. These yep. are the three that I bought via yep. Google. And then you enable it on your account. Now, you have to have this. If you lose it, it's going to be a lot harder to get into your account. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that will secure your email account. So that's but that's like, good. You want it to be hard. That's yeah. going to be hard for and the bad And you can do guy. this even if you're not in a cryptocurrency, right? Yeah, like but you it, just, it, yeah. If it's you're paranoid, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, second thing is... Um, this is two-factor plus. That's this right. Is, this is even stronger than just two-factor. Right, which is just like a text to your phone yeah, or something For most like people, two-factor is sufficient. But if you're, if you're storing millions of dollars in Bitcoin, you, you want to make it right. hard to get. So the next thing is um, software-based wallets. So this is a, an example of one that I like called Jax. And the reason I like this wallet is because it supports so many different coins. Yeah, so, so my Bitcoin wallet only supports Bitcoin. That's right. So you can go in here and say wallets, oh, and then look at all these different coins that you can enable here. Okay. So you can say, uh, I have some Augur here. Some of these are actually tokens and not is this, real currencies. Ja is Jax Mac only or Mac Windows? Uh, I believe Windows as well. Okay. Um, so Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Litecoin. You just enable them, and then you can switch between them at the top here. So you can say, how many ETH do I have? Obviously, this is just a, t a test account, so there's not going to be any And that in here. QR code you see there is something you can give to people? Yeah, so this is your address. Right That's here. how they send you money. Right, so you can just copy it right there. So I just copied it to the Got clipboard. It. You can see and I can text can it to them and say, send me money. Right, exactly. And if you have their number, you press that send button, you can send them. You hit send, you put in their points. address right there. Yeah. Let's say that's a dummy address. You type in how many ETH I want to send them for ETH and then hit send and it goes right over to them. Now one thing I noticed is there's a transaction cost for all of these. That's right. And it's variable. The more you pay, the faster, at least on Bitcoin, the faster the transaction happens. That's right. Um. <laughs> so, but here's the thing that's interesting about this though. Uh, when you set up this wallet for the first time, there is one um, set of different words that they give you to restore this wallet. Oh. So you have to write down those those words. You have to store them in something it's a like backup code. last pass, one password, Got things it. like that. Uh, an alternative to I that. I wish I had used that wallet. That would have check this out. What's so this? This is called Crypto Steel. <laughs> So you this put your hysterical. words. Yeah, this is not a digital wallet. No, this is you slide that's those your passphrase. Those, that's your passphrase, and you slide those in one at a time. And you, this is just a dummy phrase. You can't try this at home. You're not going to get anything out of it. But you slide them in, and then you keep that in a safety deposit box you or anything you want. You seal it up. You, you can put a lock down. on there. Now, if somebody got this, that would be this is that's this right. Is, this is something to remember with these. If somebody gets this, right. They've got your wallet. They've got your. This coin. is like holding cash in your hand. It's basically. like yeah, yeah, yeah. So someone took this and they put it in a. Um, they they created this big uh, fire pit, and they put it in, and they let it sit in there for like thirty minutes, no problem. They threw it off a balcony that wow. was like ten stories high, no problem. So that see it's, again, it's, it's pretty see, hardcore. If Leo had put his passphrase into this, I would be you know seventy thousand dollars richer right now. You gotta remember that passphrase. <laughs> it's killing me. <laughs> so that's, okay, that's, so that's, that's what's whole, that called? Yeah, this is called Crypto Steel. Crypto and it's steel. not cheap. This is like $150 or somewhere around there. Um, you could also write it on a piece of paper and put it in a safe but, deposit box. Right. So if people that have it on a piece of paper, obviously if there's a flood, okay. there's things like that, you know, that, that okay. kind of goes away. There it is. Okay. How much how much is the price now? I think they raised the price. $199? Wow. Yeah, $199. But it is, it's kind of a neat artifact. It's pretty cool. This is the kind of thing uh, Axe would have in Billions. Exactly. You know, in Billions the other night, a guy did, a, did him a favor and he handed him a USB stick. He said, here's a stick, there's a million on it in Bitcoin. He never gave him the passphrase, though.
That's right. So you need the passphrase. You need the passphrase. Um, one but step. But you could do that, right? I could give you a USB device with a Bitcoin wallet on it. Oh, this right here. That's this? What, that's what this. That's what these are right here. That's this. A, this is the stick. Yeah. So that's a Ledger hardware wallet, and this is a, a Trezor hardware wallet. And if you take a look, I can I can show oh, you what it looks like when they light. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So. Um, so this Why has does this soft... have a screen? What's the screen so for? So the, the screen is for getting your PIN and, and putting your PIN in as well to unlock it. So all of your private keys are encrypted and stored on this device. And okay. it also has a unique phrase. So if it gets damaged or smashed, you, have you can a buy a new one and code. restore it with okay. that unique phrase. Okay. Um, and then you can take a look at all the different currencies that this supports. So, so the reason you would carry this around is so that I could like uh, have dinner with you and then sh give... Like show you my QR code? Is that on here? Well, no. Uh, actually, I think What's it does. This for? Well, it encrypts everything on this little device, so it gets yeah. it off of your computer. So many people are worried about their computer becoming if compromised your computer because they're connected hacked. to the internet. Yeah. And so this is actually you unplug it from USB. There's no internet connectivity. Got everything it. is stored on there. You throw it in your own home personal vault or wherever you like. Uh, you know, safety deposit box. And so if you look at the software right here, this is the Trezor software. It's plugged in via USB. And then here are all the different coins that it supports. Uh. So you can say, I have some Litecoin, whatever it may be, switch over here. It, it's talking to the USB device. Now, now look at the, hold up the USB now device. Now I have to enter in my magic pin. Yeah, so if you look at the, the USB, so in that, that's the, uh, it randomizes the arrangement of characters. Oh, wow. So, so I know my pin. So you couldn't even figure out what the, where the fingerprint juice was. Right, so. Um, How do I enter it? Uh, so you do it on the desktop. So look at the desktop oh. now. So now I just now I do the arrangement. I think oh. it was this one here. Oh, so was I the last get it. One? So on the desktop you're just getting dots. On the key you're getting where the keys are. Exactly. And you blew it. Yeah, I did. Let yeah. me see here. You're hold on, hold on. One million dollars down the tube. What's cool about these there is you call them wallets, but there's really nothing in them except these digits, these these numbers. I guess I lost the pen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was setting it up as a dummy account, but you get the idea. Yeah, there's nothing in it but um, the hard hardware keys, and they're all encrypted on that device right, as well. Right. So the one but you're right. So sometimes I see people put their Bitcoin wallet or their crypto wallet on their phone. That's probably a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, your phone can get stolen, and yeah. someone, if they can unlock it, they can get access to your... That's why I used a really long, strong password known to no one even me. That's right. So you're safe. I'm safe. No one's ever stealing you can steal your coins. my wallet. Because um, uh, I keep my wallet on my NAS, and it syncs automatically to all my devices. That's, that would be bad if I didn't have a password. Right. Although, yeah. as you pointed out, there are brute force software that, since they have the wallet, yeah, they I can hammer on it. I, I would keep it on, it on one of these hardware devices, yeah. get it off your computer. The one thing I will say that I like about this Ledger device, um, it's very similar to the Trezor. Um, if you take a look at the screen and we scan out here, um, these are all the different wallets it supports. And there's a, a lot of different currencies here. So it'll support Ripples, it'll support um, the, what did you want to buy earlier? You wanted to buy Stellar, Stellar right? Lumens. Yeah, Stellar's on here as well. Is it? Let's see here. Um, yep, Stellar right there. It supports Stellar. So if you start buying a few of these different currencies, the more obscure ones, you have to make sure that you buy a hardware wallet that supports it. My son is convinced that he can make money arbitraging. <laughs> Between exchanges? Yeah. That's being done a lot. <laughs> is it? Is, it, I is mean, it possible to make money? I guess you could write software. I feel like, though, one of the things that does happen is that every transaction alters the price almost right. instantly. Right. Especially if the volume's low. Yeah. Yeah. Because, so even maybe not so much for Bitcoin, but any other right. coin. There, you, it's going to well, be hard. And the exchanges take a cut for every transaction right. as well, so you have to beat that. So if he's doing that, that means he probably has a number of different currencies. Right. This is the kind of device that he right. would use then. And one last honorable mention, it's, it's one of the most popular, it's called MetaMask. And MetaMask is another software wallet, but it's only for the Ethereum network. But it supports Ethereum and all of the tokens underneath Ethereum. So you know how there's like hundreds of tokens, other currencies, that are actually Ethereum-based. So are those the ICO tokens? Uh, a lot of them are ICO tokens, okay. that's right. Okay. So if you... So like Telegram, it wanted to raise money, so they sold they close, so close to a billion dollars worth of tokens. Right. Uh, I don't know 
uh, it's not like a stock. Is it like a stock? Is it, or is it? Does it have value? What are these tokens? No, worth? they have value. Eventually, some of them want to convert to their own currencies, right. and it's a way but to sell them now. But for now, they're using now. Ethereum exactly. because that's established. Exactly. So you know, you can go down the list here and take a look. And the best way to check, for example, zero X. Let's click on that. What is that? Is that a coin? Is it? And you'll see here, it'll say. Uh, token somewhere on this, right here on this page. See that little flag that says token? Yeah. That's how you know this is an actual token and not its own standalone currency. Got it. So if you wanted to add 0x, you would go into MetaMask and then you could go under here under tokens tab here on the right and say add a token and that's where you'd put in 0x here. Oh, that's and then important you can receive 0x. That. Yeah, that's important to be able to do that as right. well. Yeah. Uh, we should point out that all of this is highly speculative. I was. Yeah. This Warren is Buffett, who is probably the smartest investor in the world, does not buy uh, cryptocurrencies. He said, because I don't, I don't buy gold either. Those are what we call speculative investments, mm -hmm. where the only value is what people will pay for them. And there's no rational way to figure that out ahead of time. Whereas if you buy a stock, if you buy Apple stock, you know it's a well-run company with a good sure. brand name. And that Warren's very good at figuring out what those companies are. He says, I, don't, I can't figure out what Bitcoin is or or you know, any other crypto currency. Yeah, most people I talk to in this world, they say, you know, it truly is invest what you can lose, or at least lose like three quarters of it. Right. So if you, you stick with that, you're gonna be your, okay. Send me your Bitcoin, it'll be safe in my wallet. You need to create a new wallet. <laughs> Because if they send you the Bitcoin from your old tweet, was it a tweet or where was it that you started? It was on the them? website for a long time. Oh, you know, man. remember you could donate and uh, that we had PayPal and other, and I had a, a big QR code. This for happened Bitcoin. to Fifty Cent, by the way. Did you know this? No. The rapper. Yeah. Yeah. So Fifty Cent accepted um, album sales for some of his albums. It's pronounced Fifty Cents. I just no. It's it's cent. No, I'm just teasing you. <laughs> so I was, I was like, did I it's get actually, it wrong? It's actually Fifty Cent. Fifty Cent. Yeah. So with he accepted uh, payments for his album in Bitcoin. Forgot that he had it, <sighs> but uh, you know he remembered his password. He did remember. Yeah. So he had like he probably 10, had ten million ten million dollars. I oh think is what it was. Oh my god. Uh, so well, you're, now you're like, he admits like he didn't cent, have any. Basically. He's bankrupt? 50 Cent is bankrupt? No, he's back in now, now that he got his He's Bitcoin. down to his last 50 cents. <laughs> so he, no, it said in there, he no, admits he never see, had any Bitcoin. No. He was, Did the whole thing out? was a scam. No. 50 cents, oh, well, he's hiding it. Of course he never had any Bitcoin. It's in the Cayman Islands like any sensible yeah. Bitcoin. Or maybe in, it's not in the Cayman Islands. This, it's, on, it's on one of these secure <laughs> ledgers. these things in a safety deposit box. This is fascinating. Um, and it's I'm glad crazy, to talk wild. to somebody who understands this because it really is kind of crazy. It's scary. It's scary. Uh, and it's interesting. And I do think that there are, and this is the other thing Warren Buffett said, a lot of scammers oh, yeah. trying to take advantage of people. Especially so. the, all these ICOs. You don't know where they're coming yeah. from, who's behind them. Well, we, we know that a couple of it, there was a big ICO out of, uh, I think, Thailand where they disappeared. Oh, yeah. They took all the money and they're gone. It's called... Uh, it's called the exit scam. That's happened a ton of times. Yeah. Don't yeah. Be, be careful. Be really careful. But nevertheless, if you if you do have some Bitcoin or legitimate cryptocurrency, it would probably be a good idea to store it. Lock securely. it down. How much is the ledger? I think I might what get this. What was the ledger? The ledger cute. was 75, I believe. <sighs> That's who's making money. You know who made money in the gold rush? Shovels. Levi's, yeah. Shovels and denim. Se 79 euros. 79 euros. Well, it's got to be Oh, good. one thing. Be careful when you buy these. I think they fixed the problem, but there was when they were people were selling them on eBay. Oh. And they would go and they would include these instructions saying you don't need to, here's the pin. But they had the original <laughs> passphrase. Here's the pin. So they would use my pin. They would wait till people transferred their funds in and then restore it on another device and steal the cryptocurrency. So buy it directly from the manufacturer. There's holograms now. There's seals now. Just make sure you're doing it the right. The Model T. I didn't know they had a Model T. There's a new one. Yeah. It's well. It's a little more expensive. It's 139 euros. Look at that. Yeah. It's evolved. That's the Rolls Royce. Yeah. The Rolls Royce of, <laughs> of cryptocurrency wallet. Thank you, Kevin Rose. Yeah. Thank you for being here too. Yeah, I really it's good to be here. It. It's good to yeah, see I you. I know you'd love to be with the baby, and but it's good to give them. It's good to have some time off too from the baby. Yeah, exactly. Uh, how, would you like to, just for old time's sake, answer a question? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do a call Sounds for great. Him. What do you say? All right, here we go, Kevin. Let's take our call All right. from Patrick in Greenbelt, Maryland. Hey, Patrick. Hello. Hello. How are you today? Hey, Patrick. I'm well. How are you? Good. Patrick um, is a so graduate. He's a Ph.D., yep graduate studies in material science love that 
What is material mm -hmm. science? A uh, really broad field has to do with materials, which make everything up. The so science anything of materials. you can imagine. Yeah. I always thought that was interesting, like you wouldn't make a bridge out of cream cheese because no. it, it, it has a very good compaction uh, ratio, but the torque ratio isn't so mm. hot. That kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so to give you a better idea, so I work on like fuel cells and batteries. Oh, neat. New materials that will work better for those applications. Oh, that's really interesting. Do you have a Tesla? No, I don't. My uh, advisor does, though. Yeah, yeah. So. Do you have a Tesla? I have one on order. You're getting a Model 3? Uh, yes. Yes. I have an I have X. An X on, I have an X on order as well. The so doors that's go like the baby. That. Need the X. It's perfect for a baby. You yeah. can open it up and you can just put the baby right in there. That's what you do. <laughs> just slam them right in. Slam them right on them. What can we do for you, Patrick? So right now, um, I have my own domain name that... That I have like the MX records set to go to Google with a G Suite account, and I use Google to manage my email. Um, I'm looking for alternatives other than using Google. Um, I don't really use the Gmail interface. I use the a Apple Mail app instead, just right. doing um, IMAP on it. So it doesn't really matter to me what the service yeah, is. So you're, I, you're thinking of thinking Google basically. Other than the yeah. So so the way email, uh, it, you know, in a nutshell, the way email works is somebody sends message to an address that's the address you bought and you own that right you didn't buy it did you buy it through google domains or no i i own the full domain perfect so, so. You, they send it to that address that address in its dns record has an mx record that's a ma email record mm -hmm. that says oh no 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 i don't want it send it <laughs> send it over there and the mail basically bounces off the registrar and goes to in your case goes to gmail and you're using gmail basically as uh, an IMAP message store, uh, which is, you know, and it's not even mm -hmm. a very, by the way, it's not even a very good IMAP message store, but it, it has one advantage. It's absolutely free, except if, if you pay for G Suite, then it's not. So what do you do? How do you do I've luckily got an old enough account that it's free. So. Oh, that's yeah. good. At least that's I good. actually use Google Suite. Uh, I got to tell you, the reason I do this, though, is because I'm paranoid, and I know Google has a great security team. Uh, you, you know, there has never, to my knowledge, been a Google breach. Yeah, for, right? for the email, I don't think so. Uh, for anything, as far as I know. I mean, you t there's hard Yahoo, three billion accounts or whatever. Right. I mean... Google, absolutely. And, uh, and of course, you know a lot of the guys, and I think Google is, is very well designed. I don't use Google. I used to use, I'll tell you why I used to. What I used to do, here's my, here's my old system. I own my own domain, leoville.com. I've had it since 95. Uh, in the DNS record, my, uh, my MX record pointed to Gmail. So if you sent something to my email address, it would then go to Gmail. Mm -hmm. And the reason I did that is because Gmail had the best anti-spam stuff, right. right? It's got collaborative anti-spam. Right. And I considered that my sewage treatment facility. And then I would have another service, FastMail, fetch the mail from Gmail, and I used FastMail as my primary message store. Hmm. So I really pa basically was passing it through Why Gmail. Why FastMail, though? FastMail is the, well, in my opinion, the best IMAP implementation mm. out there. It's really, really good. Opera bought them for a while, but they sold it back to the original FastMail founders. Here's a couple of features I like about it. It's not free. You're going to pay maybe a hundred bucks a year if you if you have a lot of a lot of content going through there. Nine dollars a month for the professional. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually probably pay more than that because I, I'm used to Gmail, so I just keep all my email. I never delete email, so right. I need a lot of storage. It has. A couple of things I really like. Spam Assassin, mm -hmm. which is a very powerful, very open smart... Open source, right? Open source anti-spam filtering. I, f I used to think I needed Gmail to get rid of the spam. When I turned off Gmail, I found out, no, Spam Assassin's doing mm. fine. So Spam Assassin, it also has something called Civ. Now, this goes way back to the dim, dark days of email. Civ is a command line-based filtering program. <laughs> and now, fortunately, FastMail has a good GUI interface to it. So you can set up rules. Rules to me are, if without rules, you have nothing, right? Email is unusable. Is that right? Well, I mean, you, I don't really use rules. I got, I, you use it to filter and sort and move things yes. around. Are you using Apple Mail? No, well, you can because it's an IMAP server. So right. one of the reasons you want IMAP, and I think you probably uh, already know this, Patrick, is that the 
So you need somewhere to put your email. In the old days, you'd have a pop mail server, which meant they'd hold it for you, but then right. you'd download it and it would live on your machine. And as soon as people got more than one machine, they realized this is crazy. Right, right. saying leave it on the server, download it over here, and it was just a mess. It made sense in the old days when ISPs had to pay for that storage space. It was expensive. So they didn't want your email on their server. They wanted you to host, you right. know, to have it on your own server. When Gmail came along, that changed everything. Sure. Because they said unlimited storage, keep everything, it's free. And that really put pressure on everybody to move to a better system, which is IMAP. Now, Gmail is not IMAP, it's IMAP-like. Right. And the biggest issue Gmail has with IMAP is this tagging, this filtering system. Right. It doesn't use real filters. Right. It doesn't move stuff into folders. It tags gives them a tag. Right, that's what I use. And the problem with these tags is a real IMAP client, like Apple Mail... It ignores them, right? Well, it's confused by them. Yeah. So, of course, Apple Mail has to work with Gmail, so they they ha have workarounds. Mm -hmm. But if you go to Thunderbird or Claws or any like powerful yeah, IMAP, that's a good expect, point. it's it gets confused by this tagging system. Yeah. One of the advantages tagging has is email can live, it can have multiple tags, right? right? And so, in your view on Gmail, it looks like it's in multiple folders. That's different than IMAP folders, right? IMAP actually it has, has to, to be in the folder. It has to be in a folder. Right. You can have copies, but yeah, so it's a little different. Uh, I like IMAP. I think IMAP is a, it's an old, very solid standard. Every email client in the world supports it. Mm -hmm. And if you have a real IMAP host, like Fastmail, it doesn't have to be Fastmail, but like Fastmail, you're going to have better success using clients. I right. think it's just going to work better. So I use the, and then Civ gives me the chance to write fairly complex, and I think people who use a lot of email end up coming up with fairly complex systems. You, I know what you do. You have many, many addresses. I right. Think. Yeah. And then I just tag them and put them in a different, like, yeah. Yeah. So I want one address that everything goes to. And, and as I said, this address has been good for f since 1995. And then you use rules, keyword-based rules, or how do you do that? All kinds of rules. So I'll give you an example. Uh, if I see unsubscribe in the body of the message, that goes into a folder called mailing lists, and I never mm, look at it again. That's smart, actually. <laughs> yes, of course. If it's addressed... <laughs> If I am in the two line, mm -hmm. not a CC, not to a hundred different people, but if I'm the one address in the two line. The only person in the two line. That goes to a special folder called Leo, because I know that that was mail directly addressed to me. And the order is important too. I do the unsubscribe first. I love that you're giving people a way to hack and like send you email. No. <laughs> it's fine. Nobody sends me email because I don't read it. And then <laughs> <laughs> there's lots of things you can do. Like so, good a good filtration system is really important. A good anti-spam system is really important. Fastmail, I think, is a very robust, solid email server. They have a lot of other things. They actually you can you can move your domain name to Fastmail, and they will do all the domain hosting. They do the more sophisticated. There's some very sophisticated email stuff. First DNS stuff and stuff that, that that makes sure that you can't be spoofed. Yeah. All of the things that I really am looking for, Fastmail does. So that's the one I use. But if you want so, security, you might use Proton Mail. I love Proton. I was just going to say Proton. That is the absolute most secure email service. And it uses out there. PGP encryption yeah. and behind the scenes. It's really cool. And that's Based a real the servers are in Switzerland. Yeah. In a well, not just in Switzerland, in a mountain. In Look, Switzerland. There's the mountain. There's the it's in the mountain. So you is know it it's really safe. in the mountain? Yeah, they say so. Yeah, they've got an Android app, iOS app. It's, yeah. it's pretty cool stuff. So the nice thing about this is that built-in end-to-end encryption. Yeah, can you do IMAP through this? Yeah. It, oh, you can? Yeah. So can you have a hosted domain here as well? That I don't know, but it, that really doesn't require them you just to point cooperate. The MX. Right. Right. So you can use anything that will accept email. Mm -hmm. You just have your domain host. You change your DNS record or your domain host. I use Hover, and I just go in there, and I say MX record, right. point to Proton. You just need a domain that allows you to go in, uh, a host that allows you to go in and edit those MX records. That's right. Because not right. all of them allow you to go to that level of detail, right? Man, not most, necessarily. There's another reason I like Fastmail is you could move your domain name to Fastmail, and they do provide all of that, plus some much more sophisticated uh, dom uh, uh, email security features. Email is pretty old, not very yeah. good. You don't use Pine anymore? You can with Fastmail. It works great. No, I, I'm a I mutt was guy. Kidding, I was no, I'm kidding. a mutt guy. You got to use amazing. mutt. Amazing. Mutt's the best. This if is you, like you, command line, like old school. <laughs> oh, I use mutt in Emacs, and he's a graduate student, so I bet he does too. What do you so, use? What do you use? What's your mail client? I just use Apple Mail mostly. I've played with other things, but nothing 
was worth the hassle to switch. Actually, Apple Mail is pretty good. Plus, yeah, it supports so. PGP, uh, which is nice. It also supports S MIME uh, certificates. I don't. I won't use an email client that doesn't let me. Uh, in, not just encrypt, but sign my mail so that people can say, oh, that really came from Leo and it hasn't been modified. I think that's pretty yeah. important. Have you seen these fancy ones with the AI built in, like Astro? Have you seen Astro? Yeah. Now? Well, now Google has this, right? There's one reason to stay with Google yeah. is they're going to add this new autocomplete feature. I don't know if you saw Google I.O. Sundar Pachai wrote an email invitation to Taco Tuesdays and he only you know, had to hit a few keys and tab. And it just seemed to know that he wanted to do. He even he said, "Bring you, oh, bring let's some smart compose." Here, watch this. As the name suggests, we use machine learning to start. So he. So wait a minute. Stop. For you. He, see that grayed out stuff. That's what the autocomplete is suggesting. So Sundar typed "haven't a s e," and it says, "Oh, you mean seen you in a while? Hit tab. Go on." As you type. All you need to do is to hit tab wow. and keep auto-completing. Wow. Now, how did it know tacos? How did it know? Well, I mean, it, it's in the subject. Bring the chips. <laughs> no, 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 no. Bring the chips and salsa. How did it know that? that anyway. crazy. So that's the kind of thing fast mail does not do and will never do, I'm sure. So mm -hmm. if that creeps you out, then fast mail's a good choice. You may want to stay it with it. It takes email. all the human component out of it, though. It's well, notice his, his message was kind of dopey. Let's get together soon. Stuff you probably wouldn't really say, right? Let's get together soon. Yeah, I guess you're right. You yeah. say it for tacos. But I don't know how it knew bring the chips and salsa. That's... Wow. And it even suggested a time. Well, wait how a second it... now. Is it looking at your calendar yeah, to know that you're free Yeah, because notice it, it, it got his address, even though Sundar Pichai does definitely not lift at 34 Smith right. Street. But... Uh, I think that that's pretty impressive. I will have to wait. You know, these demos always look so good, and then you get yeah. it, and you go, oh, this doesn't work. But um, that might be one good compelling reason to stay with Gmail. Although, you know what? G Suite won't get that. I bet you anything. You get screwed with G Suite. <laughs> really? You get all this stuff, same stuff you as get, Gmail. No, there's all sorts of stuff you can't do. because like you have what? a I don't know. Jeff Jarvis is always bitching about it. Oh, it's really? Something, yeah. It's something, it's something <laughs> it's out there. Something. <laughs> anyway, you, that Same would be company, a reason though. to stay I mean, with. That would be a good reason to stay with Gmail. Yeah. This is the problem. There's no one perfect email service. The beauty of it is because you own your own domain. It's easy. You just change the MX mm -hmm. record. You could use tomorrow. You could use Yahoo Mail if you were so inclined. <laughs> does that make sense, Patrick? <laughs> yeah, it does. Okay. Uh, Do you know how to ch edit your DNS record? Yep, I set it up, and I've got it with Hover, too, so I know oh, I've screwed things up with them before and emailed yeah. them, and they helped. They're really good if you screw yeah. things. <laughs> They're yep. really good at that. Actually, in most cases, what you'll do is, like with Fastmail, is they'll have a help page. Here's how you mm. configure your domain name server to have mail forward. With Hover, unfortunately, and I, I wish they didn't do this, they do charge you, I think five, it's cheap, $5 a year, but they do charge you for that moving along. Hover, we should mention, is a sponsor of our fine show mm -hmm. and I, I love hover i i feel like that should be free email bouncing email redirection that should just yeah. be free but you know they gotta make money somehow five bucks big deal okay well, any I'll questions out, uh, about all that i'll check out fast mail and i had looked at proton mail but i wasn't convinced on it so yeah i mean uh, steve gibson says good things about it i'm sure it's fine I think the thing with ProtonMail is I already have my own keys, PGP keys. Good man. And it was kind of like, I don't want to switch to a different thing exactly. when I already have mine all set up. I, I think that's so. the best thing to do. The problem is, is for most people, it's so complicated and you know nobody knows what their key is. And it's Why not host your own mail server though? It sounds like he's definitely could pull it off if you're doing PGP. Reliability. Yeah, like for the that. one day that it's not yeah. up and I yeah. don't get an email, I don't want to deal with that. That's fair. So I, t I tell you, I'm sure there are other, and I would love to hear from people if they have, you know, IMAP services they love. First of all, you got to use IMAP, but there are many, many IMAP services out there. I guess you could use Exchange Mail if you're really tied into the Microsoft ecosystem. Mm. Exchange has some features uh, that IMAP doesn't have. But um, I, for me, for uptime, reliability, service support, and everything, I fast mail. I've been with them for years, and I've really been happy with their. Uh, the job they do. Well, great. Thank you for the yeah. recommendation. My pleasure. Nice to talk to you, Patrick. So you, thank you. You just like what do you do? You just set up if you want, like you just set up a new email account. Yeah, you? I mean, essentially, I I go into that's how you filter. Yeah, as new email accounts, yeah. right? 
And I'll just do Google domains and add a new account. They have one click to add a new user. Oh, that's it's nice. It's $5 a month, so yeah. it is a little pricey. You be careful about it. Yeah, so you just do... Piling you know. up the users. Exactly. You do know that you can... Um, you know this, but I'll tell people who don't know this. With Gmail, if you, first of all, ignore the dots. Right. You put all the dots you in. You put them want. anywhere. doesn't yeah. matter. But what you can do is put a plus sign in. Mm -hmm. So if, if your email address, well, I'll, I'll use mine, which is Laporte at Gmail. If, I w if I'm saying, I want to make sure that this company isn't sending me spam, I'm signing up for something, mm -hmm. I can do Laporte plus their company name at gmail.com. It'll still come to Laporte at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. But now I can see and I can even filter Filter on it. and block that, that later. Yeah, yeah, right. So that is a nice feature. Anything following the plus in your Gmail, use your real Gmail address followed by plus, and then anything after that, it will all go into your inbox, but you'll be able to filter against the stuff that's after the mm -hmm. plus, which is, I think, very handy. You could just create, you know, Laporte plus spam at gmail.com. And, God, I'm going to get a lot of spam at that address. Good thing I don't use it anymore. <laughs> you know why, you know, actually, the real reason I stopped? Because it's a bad email address. Laporte at gmail you never want to like if you used kevin at gmail you got in early you got kevin it would be unusable well i have kevin rose at gmail and it's That's, unusable is it yeah okay but you really don't want it. there's a guy who has jim at aol.com right he cannot use his email because it's too generic yeah right and the problem with laporte it's a very common french name and i get all this french spam yeah and plus i think there are people who uh put space in their email address like roland space laporte at gmail.com this that throws out roland oh crazy so i i get in french well uh, the event you'll want to go to is tonight in paris and it's like i wish i could go but i'm not roland so it's i finally good just, accent yeah well I like that i am yeah, practically french with a name like laporte <laughs> so that's why i don't use gmail anymore anyway uh, anything else you want to say about email you, you, you tell me tell me all your secrets my email secrets? Yeah. I mean, I do, I'm pretty vanilla, man. Just Gmail app on my phone. Do you read your email? I do, yeah. Really? Well, I mean, I have it hidden, though. I don't like to put it you out publicly. You don't use Kevin Rose at Gmail That's right. anymore. Yeah. 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 Um, I go in there every once in a while and, and pick through things. That's, by the way, when we send him email, let's not use that address anymore? Okay. Just <laughs> have, have you guys been using oh, yeah. that? That's all we use. I have a bounce back saying I don't use it anymore. <laughs> okay. We yeah, have your yeah. real address. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it's a good idea to have other addresses. It's easy on Gmail to create new addresses. If you're not on G Suite, it's free. Yeah. You create as many addresses as you want. I just, um, okay. I just thought you'd have something more sophisticated. Mm. I can't easy. even. Uh, oh, your mail's here. <laughs> By the way, Fastmail does have. How did you do that? That was very good. Fastmail does have uh, both iOS and Android apps that are pretty good. They're not as great as Apple Mail, but they're pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, we got to do something. Next week, Padre is going to be here. He is, as you know, he's going to Rome soon. So if this may, I don't know if it's his last appearance, but it's one of his last appearances on the new screensavers. If you've got a question or you just want a blessing, here's how you can get on the show. Need tech help? The new screensavers are here with answers. Email your tech questions to newscreensavers at twit.tv. May 11th, 1998. What were you doing on that day? 20 years ago, Friday, Tech TV, it was ZDTV mm -hmm. back then, went on the air. And uh, we went out and we asked everybody who worked there in those early days for a little video thought or memory, and this is all we got. <laughs> oh, hey, Tom Merritt, host of Daily Tech News Show here. <sighs> 20 years, really? I. Don't know that I, I even really think that often about Tech TV or ZDTV, but man, there were some good memories. The filter fresh coffee, the free oatmeal, uh, but mostly what I remember is the feeling that we were all doing something different, something special. And even though we were very frustrated by things uh, from day to day, it was not surprising that we all look back on it fondly even now. So anyway, uh, you know, thanks for, for asking for, for my memories of this. Uh, I just, I guess the one memory I'll share is working on the screensavers in 1999, late at night, the rest of the team had gone on to Comdex, uh, and Greg Drebin uh, came over and said, hey man, appreciate your hard work. Um, that was, that was pretty great. And that was, 
I had only been there a couple of months. It was the kind of thing that really kept me going. So anyway, that's one of my memories, very personal to me. I don't know if it's necessarily exemplary of the time, but it was a great time. So happy birthday, ZDTV, Tech TV. All right, I was on my lunch break, so I'm just going to head off. I was the producer of the screensavers and call for help. And I remember exactly where I was when the network went live, standing upstairs in the control room with our director of operations, Dave Seedall, and with our executive producer, Greg Drebin. At least that's how I remember it. And I remember the technical director hitting the button to take the network live. We had this long promo that explained what the heck ZDTV was, a network all about computers, what? It really did seem ahead of its time, and it was. It was way ahead of its time, um, as evidenced by the fact that it doesn't exist anymore or it died before it became a thing. Um, And, you know, it was an incredible experience because really we were just all kids running this cable network. Um, The inmates were running the asylum. There weren't that many grownups. I mean, for one thing, it was in San Francisco, so there weren't a lot of television professionals. Um, Nobody had ever done this, made a cable station around computers and technology. And we just sort of made it up as we went along. Um, I came from a TV background, um, although I'd always been interested in technology. And I was thinking of one story that would kind of encapsulate what it was like behind the scenes. And so many of you that are Screensavers fans remember Pat Norton, and he's still around and a great personality. Um, he was came from the IT world. He was so confident in everything he knew about computers. And I came from the TV world, but I really wanted to play in this computer and technology space. And I was always butting heads with Pat. And he would always say, well, Becky, I know because I know about computers. And I would, wow, darn it. And it was sparring with Pat on so many issues that spurred me to go back to school and get a master's degree in computer science and education. Um, It was just so um, inspiring to be around all this knowledge. And you just wanted more. And you wanted to be able to compete in the arena that was the screensavers and tech TV. Um, you know, I think about all the people that were there and how we we didn't just show up at work. It wasn't just like phoning it in. Um, we lived tech TV, um, ZDTV. There were so many people who would get together outside of work. We'd go have drinks. There were quite a few people dating. <laughs> there are actually quite a few marriages that came out of Tech TV and ZDTV. Kids that are now 11 and 12 years old whose parents met uh, behind the scenes at Tech TV. Um, there's an incredible diaspora of all the people that were there that have gone on to different places in the industry. I mean, we have uh, folks who work at me, ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN. Um, the BBC. It's incredible when you think that we were just a bunch of ding-dongs trying to make pretend TV, and we actually did it. Um, Tech TV and the Screensavers was just a huge part of my life. Meeting Leo and being inspired by him and having him be a mentor for me. He actually wrote um, the recommendation letter for me to go to grad school, um, and I, I just am so glad that I had that experience that these people were in my life. And um, it just feels like yesterday. And it's insane to think that it was 20 years ago. Ah, ZDTV days. I miss them. Thing strikes me most 20 years after, well, ZDTV, which became Tech TV, which then exploded into this diaspora of uh, talent all over the internet and actual real television on cable and broadcast is uh, the people. Um, who were so incredibly generous and worked so incredibly hard and taught so many of us how to make television and gave us an opportunity to make television about things that we loved. And that really is the legacy for me of Tech TV is not just the people we reached out through through the camera, but the people we worked with behind the camera and how extraordinary they all were. Thanks. Ah, Leo, Leo, Leo. How long has it been? 24? 36 hours since we did a show together? It's been a while, hasn't it? ZDTV, 20 years old. That would have made me, what, 16 when uh, the network started? Yeah, let's go with 16, definitely 16. 
Well, as our favorite poet Eminem once said, you only get one shot, one opportunity. And if you've taught me anything, Leo, it's that this is absolutely not true. You get two shots. So thanks for the first and the second. I'm spaghetti on the sweater. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Becky. Thank you, Tom Merritt. Thanks, Marty Sargent for coming in earlier. And of course, thanks to you, Kevin Rose. Yeah, it's good to be here. Yeah, those were the days. Oh, those so much fun. Those were the days. We still have a few things lying around from, this is this is all Jerry's stuff. Jerry, what did you do? You cleaned up at the eBay auction after the network went out of business. When I got fired. <laughs> you kept all this stuff? Look at this. I never even saw this one. What is this, a, a Tech TV man keychain? We made all, you know why we made all this stuff is for the cable affiliates, right? These are all, they were all gimmies. And the ZDTV beach towel, never used. This is this one you could sell on eBay. You make three, four bucks. <laughs> Look at that. About as much as the shipping. Yeah, I know, I know. No, no, that's been used. Did you see that? Oh that my was, God, uh, you used it. it yeah, it was in a box, yeah. Uh, he keeps coming up with stuff. I'm done. Uh, is that it? We've now emptied the prize closet? The ZDTV, dot coms, not sitcoms. That was clever. Amaze yourself. Let's get the mail back. Anyway, enough. I don't, you know, I, nostalgia. We don't, we don't need to live there. Although. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> although this is kind of funny. Look at this. So back in 2008, 10 years ago, you and I were in a ray. This is kind of hard to believe for the most followers on Twitter. That's right. Do you remember that? I do remember this, yes. This, uh, and at the time, I was number one on Twitter with, get this, 30,000 followers. Number two, a guy, I don't know what ever happened to him, named Barack Obama. Then Kevin Rose, Jason Calacanis, Robert Scoble, Scoble. Veronica Belmont, Merlin Mann, CNN Breaking News, which was not at the time owned by CNN, or maybe they bought it later. Michael Arrington, whatever happened to him? He's still around. Yeah. He mm -hmm. runs a crypto hedge fund now. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Mac Rumors, <laughs> Alex Albrecht, your, your compadre from yeah. Dignation. John C. Dvorak, who really didn't want to be on Twitter, as I remember. Hi, I Jess Dean's on there. I, Dave Troy, I don't know who that is. Oh, Twitter Vision. Jake Marsh. Callie. And Callie Lewis. Crazy. This is back when being a podcaster was hot stuff. <laughs> now, here's the Let's difference. Come back. First of all, Kevin beat me shortly thereafter. You actually, first you beat Barack Obama. That was uh, 12 days you won. later. I won, well. You got the t-shirt. I got the t-shirt, and then you, you creamed me. But you know who really changed it all was Ashton Kutcher, your friend uh, Ashton yeah. Kutcher. When he joined Twitter, that's when everybody else started joining Twitter. But you were smart. See, I, I got a t-shirt. You invested in Twitter. I begged to get in. Who to knew? In Twitter. Yeah. Who knew? That was my entire life savings I put into Twitter. Did you really? Pretty much. And are Pretty you much. happy? It worked out. Did you get out? I got out. Yeah. <laughs> it worked out. It's, not, it's, 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 it's important to know when to buy, but it's also important to know when to sell, isn't it? Yeah, without a doubt. You could and ride it all the way down. You always want to be diversified. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm learning from this guy. This guy knows. Uh, email number one. From Truman, my daughter recently moved into an apartment. I want to get her a wireless security camera she can look at on iPhone and will let her know if someone is in her apartment. She lives upstairs, so probably just needs one. What would you recommend? Do you have an opinion? You know, I actually bought a couple of these recently yeah. because of the whole new baby thing. Yeah. And, Do you uh, use it as a baby monitor or just for security? You know, just I actually have an, I have a different one that's a baby monitor. Yeah. So the the but I did get a Nest and also a Ring. Yeah. And they're both pretty awesome. I agree. I, I really don't yeah. know that I. You kind of have to like love the software, and they're both decent. Yep. And I I have the Ring. I use the Ring the most. I would say. The one thing to keep in mind on all of these is not only is the initial cost, but you're going to be paying a monthly fee for a subscription right. so that they store the video. If you want history. That's and you right. kind of do. You at least want a few days of history, right? Right, right. Um, so, yeah, I think that that's something to always keep in mind is there's going to be an additional cost. Yeah, it. the one thing that bothers me that I'd love to figure out is how much bandwidth each of those consume. In a terms lot. Of, a lot, right? A lot. So how do you fix that problem? That's, that's actually stopped me from doing like multiple cameras at a house because I just don't want all my bandwidth going to these cameras. Yeah. We should mention uh, Ring is a sponsor. And then there's one other sponsor that you didn't mention. I don't know, have you seen The Lighthouse? 
because this is a very cool camera. No. So this is a camera. Oh, here's here it is. So the idea is, uh, it's a it's much like a Nest or any other camera, but it's got the camera, but it also has a uh, infrared lidar sensor. Hmm. It's got a time of flight lidar sensor, so it builds a 3D map and it uses AI. These the the guy who started this was in the DARPA Grand Challenge. He's a he's an MIT AI guy, and it uses AI to distinguish humans, pets from you know mylar balloons and other things mm -hmm. moving in the house but it can tell the difference between a pet and a human it can tell the difference between different humans so you could say for instance uh ping me when daria gets home right or did did daria come home with toaster after 2 p.m hmm. or and if it's the dog sitter you'll know the difference wow so that's pretty cool too i would say uh and I, you know this is a little more expensive than a nest uh, I think that's pretty cool. I can't remember, but uh, we found it when it was a, a Kickstarter project, and now they're they're going great guns, and they're a great sponsor. But I also use it, and I like it. And one of the other things it does, two ninety nine. That's actually not that bad. It's not more than the Nest. And one of the other things it does that was a must. Uh, Lisa does not like cameras in the house. She says, well, "I don't know where that video is going." Right. Right. I mean, I'm gonna. I might. I might. As, as in fact, I showed her a video. Yeah. Here you are. You know, in, in the middle of the night, walking into the kitchen. Naked, right? She doesn't know where that video is going to go. So the nice that's thing about fair. That's, 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 that's reasonable, it's, right? Yeah. Especially with a Kickstarter project. Yeah. Or well, that's know. what's neat about Lighthouse. So uh, it's on your phone. You can say when it when my phone when I'm home, turn off. I don't need a camera oh, when I'm home. Oh, interesting. So and you can say that's that, awesome because it can recognize it's you. Yeah. Well, it recognizes from the phone. So oh, from the phone. It knows okay. that the phone has joined the network. Actually, it would recognize you as well. But uh, yeah, I think that's a. To me, that's another thing to consider. Your daughter gets this camera. It's on when she's home, unless she remembers to turn it off or cover it up or turn it away. The nice thing about a camera with some smarts like the Lighthouse is it will, dis it was, it, uh, you can set it up, but it doesn't, the camera's off. Yeah. It's off right now because Lisa's home. Well, the other thing too is I have uh, one of them just sitting in a box because you have to mount them. Yeah. It, it, I See, mean, this is nice. It's just like ready, that's like yeah. ready to go. Yeah. That's and pretty it, awesome. And it swivels. And I think it comes off. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> The number of times I've seen you think, I think, I think this, this does it, and then it breaks right on air. Off, right. Crack. Yeah, unfortunately, oh, I have a bad... Uh, it has a microphone. Oh, it's two-way. The other thing is, uh, when Zelda gets a little bit older, she's not going to have a smartphone yet, but you can teach her, just wave at the camera, it'll ping Daddy. And then it sends a message to your phone saying, no Zelda's way. waving at you. You could say, hi, Zelda, because it's got a speaker. Oh, that is amazing. You can hear her back. That is so cool. You should get one I'm of these. I'm definitely going to get I one. I can arrange it. Do you have a coupon code? Yeah, I might. <laughs> I might have more than a coupon code, my friend. I think probably if you use Twit, that almost always works. Uh, do you have a question? No. Oh, we were, show, we were going to talk about another device. Oh, I want to see this. Yeah, check that now, out. Now, we had a sponsor called Motive that made a ring that would uh, sense your sleep, which is good because I don't like to wear a watch in bed, but it would also uh, do your exercise and all that. It was pre It's pretty cool. You charge it, it would go a couple of days. But this is a new product. It's not out yet, right? Yeah, so this is the second generation of a product called Aura. And um, I will say they did sponsor a previous podcast that I was, I was on, but I have no ties to Dude, them today. I remember when you were sing singing the praises of a company that hadn't yet launched a product called Fitbit, yeah. and I ordered one the minute it came out. So I trust you. So what's yeah. good about this So Aura? check this out. I can show this off right here. So okay. this is my actual data. So Aura has, um, because of the proximity to your arteries and your finger, and they sample at... It says go easy. Why is it telling you to because go Because I, I had bad night's sleep last night. So here's my sleep from last oh. night. And you can see... You consider 91 a bad night's sleep? Well, you can see my... Well, also, uh, it looks at a couple other factors, <laughs> okay. too. Okay, because I would be happy to have a 61 these well, days. Well, check this out. My deep sleep was pretty bad. You can see my different sleep... Oh, that's nice. Yeah, 53 minutes is not enough. No. Sleep stage is here. Here's oh, my resting this. heart rate. And this, wow. And it does actually your, your how many breaths per minute and everything. It's crazy the amount of data that they have. Watch the glare a little bit. We can't see the whole thing. Oh, sorry. Yeah, got the glare go. on there. You forgot about that. Stuff. Yeah, I forgot the, the secrets. Go easy. So, and your heart rate, what is it? Readiness, what is that? So it says my readiness score, your resting heart rate was above average yeah. and you may not be entirely recovered. Right. So it could be late workouts, stress, stimulants, alcohol. I had pizza last night. When's this going to be out? No, uh, pizza. This, this, ships, this ships in uh, probably three weeks now. How so. much? 
I believe they're two fifty or two ninety. Yeah, that's about what the motive was as well. Aura, oh, aura is spelled with an O. Yeah, O U R A. And then they also check this out. This is the activity tracking piece of it as well. So it's just like a Fitbit in that way. It shows you the number of calories you've burned, how See, many I, steps you've taken. I like taken. this. I wear an Apple Watch, but it's you don't want to wear it all the time. I like the idea of. So you wear this. How long does it charge last? Uh, five day battery life. Five days. Yeah, wow. which is pretty awesome. You wear this all the time. All the time. It's great. It really is. We're, you know, initially these things, including the Fitbit, were really just glorified pedometers. But we are right. getting to the point now, thanks to heart rate, I think primarily, but also sleep tracking, where they know a lot more about you. And yeah, check out these different things that you can actually cut into the data with. You can say, show me my bed start time, and this is over time. Oh wow! When I go to bed, you're very consistent, which is good. You want yeah. to be consistent. No, on I'm that terrible. Stuff. Yeah. Um, REM sleep. Yeah. Amount of REM sleep over yeah. time. Can it, you correlate that to coffee or? That's what they're working on, yeah. exactly. Yeah, because I'd like to know if that affects my REM sleep, that'd be valuable, or exercise, or saunas. It's pretty cool. Nice. That's O-U-R-A, and which model is this? Uh, this is the second generation, so they only have one out now that they're shipping with. The last one was pretty big, and they were able to get the, the size of it down quite a bit, so it looks just like a normal ring. So I have to decide if I'm gonna get a Rilo, a GoPro, Fusion, or an aura. I can get you a coupon code for this one. <laughs> <laughs> Very. Are you an investor? No. No. I just, just like it. I just like it a lot. Nice. I, I know the CEO quite well. He's a buddy, and um, yeah, it's just a great product. What's What's interesting about all of this stuff is that they're getting these sensors so small that it can easily yeah. be in a ring. I think it's going to be interesting to see if we start getting earbuds and other things that can have measure more than just right. heart rate, blood pressure, VO2 max, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. It's really cool. The quantified self. Kevin Rose, where what do you you've got a newsletter? We know that. So yeah. where can I subscribe to that? Yes, yeah, so I have a podcast called the Kevin Rose Show. It's not. Uh, it's a couple times a month. Okay. And it's very like quantified self biohacking, productivity hacking, nice. things like that. Good. Uh, my newsletter, uh, you can subscribe to that, which is once a month on there. And I'd say the other big thing I'm working on is a new version of Oak, uh, my meditation oh, nice. app. Good. I really so, like Oak. Oh, thank you. There's yeah. there's going to be a, a big big new redesign oh, and nice. a bunch more courses, and it's all it's going to be free still. So yeah, everything is linked on uh, kevinrose.com. Kevinrose.com. Kevin is really. Always a pleasure to see you. Please give my love to Daria and Zelda. Yeah, we will do. Come back anytime. Toaster. Yeah, I'll bring toast next time. Yeah, usually yeah. you bring toast. Where's yeah, the dog? Yeah, I know. I should have. He, yeah. he loves for a little, yeah. little trip out. How does Toaster like the baby? Is it uh, all right? Yeah, he's getting used he's, to it. Yeah, he's had you all to himself. Yeah, he was a little bit like, you know. What is this little thing? Yeah, now he'll come so up and little licks and things like that. So yeah, it's that's, awesome. That's, it's great to see you. Thank yeah, you good so to see you as coming. well. Thank you for coming to the show, watching it. Aren't you glad you watched today? I think you might be. Uh, we do this show every Saturday afternoon, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. If you want to watch, you can actually get tickets. They're free. Just email tickets at twit.tv. We love having a studio audience. Do be aware that coming up to Petaluma on a weekend, traffic's usually pretty bad. So leave some extra time if you want to come to the show. Uh, if you want to watch live on the stream, you can do that too, twit.tv slash live. But if you do that, you should really, really probably be in that chat room at irc.twit.tv. Those are the smart kids in the back of the class making fun of the teacher. Uh, you can also watch on demand. Everything we do is available at our website, twit.tv. In the case of this show, twit.tv slash NSS. But my favorite way for you to watch is to subscribe. Get your favorite podcast app, whether it's Overcast or Pocket Cast, Google Play or iTunes, whatever it is you use, your podcast app on your phone, just make sure you subscribe to the new screensavers. That, and get the video. There's audio too, but you know, there's a lot of pictures in this show. That way you'll have an episode every single week the minute it's available. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on the new screensavers. Bye-bye. Yeah, two.